This is the Opie and Anthony program on XM Satellite Radio. It's a virus. The uh, ONA virus spreading across America thanks to XM Satellite Radio. Getting more gooder every day, right, Ed? Of course it is. Hi. How are you? Doing good. Bill Burr in studio for Jimmy. What's up? Jimmy back in Hollywood doing the HBO thing Hollywood. for like three weeks. Doing his Hollywood thing. <laughs> doing that stupid little Hollywood thing. <laughs> hey, what's he doing? Huh? Some dumb little TV show. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Make a million. Yeah. What the fuck is he thinking? At this point, we're entertaining the world. He's doing his cute little HBO show. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that nice? On that little network. On that little network called HBO. That little HBO. I haven't, uh, I haven't seen clip one, not stitch one of that show. We're here on a daily basis trying to put out product. And he uh, talks about this show a lot. He takes a lot of time off. But uh, I don't know. For all I know, he could just be out there uh, fucking around. Yeah, getting Horse, hookers. Horsing around, getting hookers. Exactly. I want to start by saying I've never been more tired in my life. And I blame Don Wicklin. Oh, yes, I still blame you, Don. Yes. Oh, yes, I still blame you. Yes. You're going to be puking all day today. Had a little trouble on the... Uh, a little? On the flight back, did you? A little. Now I got some some something going on up here in my chest area. Yeah. This area right here. Why am I doing a Dane Cook? <laughs> I want to feel like a Dane Cook with my my hand motions. This area. <laughs> How he does that. Jesus, we get it. It's the goddamn Tell the traveling. fucking joke, will you? <laughs> uh, I like Dane Cook, though. I'm just fucking I know. Him. I was going to say I'd love to criticize him, but... No, you know, I like him, but... It's, you sell out with a friggin' Nets play. Yeah. And there's really nothing I can yeah, say at that point. I understand. <laughs> it's the goddamn, the goddamn traveling is what it is. It it uh, destroyed me. And you can call me a wimp. You can call me whatever. I don't give a shit at this point. I'm I'm beyond tired. My time in Vegas, I'm not going to lie to you, sucked. I never caught up. I never had energy. Um, we talked about it on the show when I got out there. It took me 16 hours to get to Vegas. You had the hell ride uh, to Vegas. Which, whatever, things happen. But when you go to the airport at 5 in the morning, you assume that uh, the tickets that were booked for you are going to be there waiting for you. And when you find out at like 5, 5.15 in the morning that one of your tickets uh, was uh, canceled, yeah, that would throw you into a bit of a tizzy. Make a long story wow. short, I had, to, um, I had to take all my stuff from LaGuardia drive i just happen to have my car to jfk which isn't a, a quick little ride no unless it's no. the middle of the night when there's no cars on the road then it's a quick little ride and then uh, i got on another flight from jfk had a pass vegas where the pilot is actually going look out the left side of your uh, of the plane <laughs> and you'll see vegas i'm like great that's where i have to be you look out of the uh, left side of the aircraft um you're gonna see uh where opie wants to be right about now but he's not gonna be for another uh let me check about uh eight more hours yeah yeah i had to fly all the way to la to go back uh. to vegas and I had to wait in L.A. for the next plane to go back to Vegas. Make a long story short, I, I bored the listeners with this when I was in Vegas. It took me 16 hours to get to Vegas door to door. I, and it just destroyed me. 16 between, hours? Between the uh, the time difference and all that, I just never had a rhythm out there. And I, ne I didn't have fun. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And then uh, here's the deal. Now my car is at JFK Airport, Okay. So I, I talked to Don Wicklin. I'm like, Don, I need to get back to JFK Airport. And he goes, no problem. I'll take care of this, okay? So what, we went back and forth for two or three days deciding on what flight I'm going to take on Saturday. And he assures me that if I take the, uh, the what was it, the 1220 out of Vegas to Houston, then it would be Houston to JFK. I'm like, great. All right. I'm still bummed out about how I got out to Vegas. Couldn't get right. a direct flight? That's a that's a whole nother story, because XM for some reason likes to book everything last minute. I don't get that one, but yeah, that that works well every single time. You hear, Bill? You couldn't get a direct flight yeah. to Vegas? Yeah, I know. That's what no, we, I know the whole. That's way. what we said to these people, and they they thought we were crazy for bringing it up. That you're crazy. No, that's what happens. Like one time, I had to go to L.A. and I was in Denver, and I had to fly to St. Louis and then go. All the way to LA. So you literally fly two hours in the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah, just to go back to where you need to be. Right. Yeah. Oh, they had us going to Utah for a while. Uh, yeah, Utah in the in the winter. That's a safe flight. So, uh, <laughs> so, and every second you're on the plane that you're passing, 
your destination, you're just uh, sitting there going, now here's the waste of time time. This is just complete waste uh, of fucking time. Yeah. This destination you behind just me. Jump out, parachute out of the plane. Yeah. yeah. I'm leaving my destination behind me at a few hundred miles an hour at a clip. Yeah. And every minute we're uh, going this way and it's going to be an uh, hour. Great. And for the new listeners, they're like, what's a big deal? Shit happens. But they've been fucking up our travel. Since coming to XM, like I can't, we have a whole list of things that have happened since uh, coming to XM yeah. as far as traveling goes. So we go back and forth on the Blackberry for two days. He goes, yeah, the twelve twenty flight will get you to Houston, then Houston JFK, no problem. I'm like, all right, book me, I'm I'm there. All right, so I go to the uh, airport on Saturday morning. I get there around, uh, I don't know, I I guess uh, right around ten a.m. or so. And I go up to the the desk and I'm all happy, like, all right, at least I'm gonna get home to my car and I could you know drive from there. And uh, I go, uh, you know, I decide to check at that point. Yeah, so I got a continental flight for uh, Vegas to Houston and Houston to JFK. The guy looks at me like I have two heads. He goes, JFK? Uh, J- J- the JFK? <sighs> this, there's not many flights uh, on continental uh, directly to JFK. Mm-hmm. That's, like, uh, that's very rare. I'm like, you're kidding, right? I thought, like, now it's Anthony and the guys and Norton and everyone just fucking with me because of how awful my travel no, was to Vegas. Newark and LaGuardia are continental. Yeah. Big, uh, he goes, JFK. Airport. Everyone knows pretty much that, that we don't fly to JFK. Well, they do, but, like, it's very minimal. I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me, right? <laughs> the terminal's out. You got to go kind of around. You see the dumpster? Uh, go around there. <laughs> Uh, let's go to Joe. He makes a good point. I'll, I'll give it to him. Joe, go ahead. I'm going to put myself out there, Opie. You worked for four hours over five days and probably nine days over the last two and a half weeks. Oh, and no. you pitch in the morning. No, here's the deal. I'm glad we're back into a rhythm finally because the last three weeks have been fucked up. We've been doing a show here, doing a show there, changing the schedule here. It's going to be nice to get into that. Dude, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you that I, we went out there to work hard. We were looking at this as a, as a nice little, uh, break from the action because we did work through the holidays. Yeah. You know, most radio shows didn't work through the holidays. So to us, it was like, yeah, do two, two hour shows and then enjoy ourselves in Vegas. What I'm trying to tell you is I never got a chance to really enjoy Vegas because I just, I was just exhausted from the ridiculous travel. I did it for well, you. Well, I know Thank you, you. Because you didn't bite my head off, man. Punch it out. All right, Joe. No, he, Joe makes a good point. So I'm like, it's not flying. So to make a long story short, my trip was... Um, so uh, wait, where did they dump you off? Vegas, Houston, Houston to LaGuardia. Now I have to go... Now after flying all day, I have to get my car at JFK. So you had to drive from LaGuardia, LaGuardia in a taxi cab line. Well, <laughs> take a cab from LaGuardia where are you to going? JFK. Manhattan? No, Why? see what see what happened at that point. A real man took over the situation, and Eric Logan made sure I had a car at LaGuardia. Oh, like a real man, like figured out there was a problem, and then because I'm, you called him up and made such a pleasant phone call. Oh yeah, no, sure. Eric Logan is just as pissed off as I am. So oh, okay. it, see, because I told the guys around here, I'm not stupid. I know I get a reputation for being an asshole, but uh, this one, no way. No one's blaming me for being an asshole. Eric Logan was beyond pissed too, and and because he's a real man, he took care of the situation. And a man in my yeah. position can't afford to be made to look ridiculous. All right, <laughs> Don Wicklin, I'm on the plane. Now pissed off that I'm going to LaGuardia, right? And I get uh, I get a phone call and I get a, a email on my BlackBerry. He, as they're closing the the, the doors on the plane, he uh, announces that he now found me a flight from Houston to JFK. I'm like, and then the the stewardess is looking at me, going, "What? It's imp- it's it's not feasible to get your bags off this uh, yeah, plane. Yeah, the time. And there's no way we could guarantee oh. that your bags will make it to JFK. I'm like, holy shit, he's making it even worse. So I got that's when I got on the phone with Eric Logan. I go, will you tell this fucking asshole to stop? We have to uh, stop. We have Elo talking with uh, Don right here. You can act like a man. What's the matter with you? I didn't think it had to get physical like that. So it, apparently he slapped him in the face. Uh, so at that point, Eric Logan took over because that's what real men do. And uh, and he got me a car, like literally his private driver. So when I got off the plane, there was a there was a ride waiting for me because I mentioned this because you you mentioned the cab line. Mm-hmm. Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! If they didn't have a car for me after this fiasco and I had to wait in that cab line, oh, it yeah. went on for days. And those people are like, this sucks, but they're getting a ride to their homes. I would have had to wait on that cab line just to go to another airport to get my fucking car. 
So it added about an hour and a half onto my fine travel. Uh, I wish I had the audio of you muttering to yourself, going, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sons of bitches, fucking motherfuckers. motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Knocking over kids. Oh, it's just angry. You just get angry. You wish you had the voice. Well, here, I'll, I'll, this is fun when we get to let everyone in on some stuff. Let's see here. That happened to me when I was coming back from uh, Livonia, Michigan. Ah, New Year's for, uh, in Livonia for New Year's. Yeah, I go to go. I'm, uh, you know, going and checking for my flight to fly back, and I walk up, and uh, you know, there's like 600 people in line trying to fly back. Uh -huh. So I'm like, I know what I do. I'll just go out to the uh, sky cap, toss a guy five bucks, and I'll be in and out. And I, I show up, and my 10 o'clock flight has been canceled. And the next one out is like, uh, I think it was like 3 in the afternoon. Oh, wow. what are you doing? So I'm sitting there trying, okay, I'm going to stay, be, be in a good mood. So they go, okay, it took my bag, give me a voucher. I go in there to check with the lady about the voucher. She goes, well, you want to get on? There's another 10 o'clock to go to JFK. And I'm like, okay, but I just checked my bag out on the curb. Can I go get that? And she's like, no, you can't. It, no. It's too late. Yeah. You no, now have no. to sit here for five yeah. hours. Yeah. No, that bag is gone, <laughs> yeah. sir. The stewards looked at me like, what? Oh, you're changing <laughs> flights as we're you know, closing the door? And, and oh, she's yeah. like, I can't personally take your baggage off. You have to go back to the agent, you know, out, you know, in the terminal. Yeah. So, because you, you said you wish you could read my mind. Well, here you go. Here's a communique that was sent to Eric Logan, who I, I love dearly, who has really... Uh, Made us big stars at uh, XM. Was this the one that was CC to everybody? Everybody. <laughs> everybody. I'm did you get this bill? Because I think I see You got to share no. the fun with every employee. Well, out of Travis, the CC loop. It, Travis got this one. It was sent to Eric Logan. Yes. Lowly, lowly Travis got this one. It was sent to Eric Logan, Anthony, Don Wicklin, Jim Norton, Ben, Sam got Steve. It. <laughs> it goes on and on. And this is exactly what I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take this shit anymore. I'm done as far as traveling for XM goes. Don't even approach me with travel plans for anything. The unprofessionalism and incompetence is fucking mind-boggling. Please read the email that was sent by Don below carefully. It says I'm all set to fly into JFK where my car is. Guess what? I'm flying to fucking LaGuardia. Meaning after flying all day, I have to take a What's cab the, to another uh, airport to get my car. The airport code for fucking LaGuardia. Uh, F-L-G-A. -G -A. F -L -G -A. I've flown into LaGuardia before. I hear fucking LaGuardia is really a bitch, though, to uh, get out of. <laughs> Meaning after flying all day, I have to take a cab to another airport to get my car. Also, our seats are not together, which is minor, and I, I acknowledge that. But, Don, why would you say they were uh, they were next to each other when obviously they're not? So he didn't even check on the flight. And and he'll he'll go to his grave saying he did. But you didn't because, you know what, they just happened to change the seats? You see him 80 years old, laying in a hospital bed. I did book that flight correctly. <laughs> He's going to his grave. I will never say that. <laughs> Rosebud. Uh, <laughs> you joke? It's the travel agency's fault. You joke? I will I will haunt him <laughs> until he either gets it right or yeah. quits. Really? That's his only option. But yeah, I will be Obi haunting thumbs him. thumbs are still bruised from typing that text message with all that anger. <laughs> Well, my Blackberry's fucked up, uh, thanks to the yeah. fine folks at Circuit City who were pouring uh, Red Bull and vodkas all over it. Oops. It's another story. We uh, had a fine party in Vegas the last night. Great guys say, at Circuit City. Been, there were a lot of parties of going on. What, yeah, thing. there were all kinds of, like, the AVN Awards the thing, the thing was going on, the yeah. adult video news uh, thing was going on. So Jimmy and Keith the Cop are going to these parties. I'm getting invites to go to these parties porn parties and then someone went and comes back and and you hear it sucked it was like a room full of people like it could have been just anyone's dopey party that you walk into and don't know anyone <laughs> yeah. like you expect a porno party is gonna be naked girls and dildos and shit like yeah, that flying across the room no it's just guys standing around yeah well you know video sales were up three percent this uh year uh we're hoping next quarter is gonna be a little bit <laughs> this is a porno party where's the dildo yeah where's, where's the, the hedgehog doing some ass fucking yeah where's the double dongs <laughs> All right, so um, the seats weren't together, this, but Don, why would you say they were when obviously they're not? This really makes me feel like an important part of the team. This is just another error on a long list of travel fuck-ups since coming to XM. Why do I have to personally suffer because people don't like Kenny? I can't think of anything like this happening when Kenny's involved. Didn't. It never happened. Never. 
Uh, as well, Kenny was a road manager for 18 years. Yeah, but they want to ignore that for some reason. As far as the trip coming to Vegas, I would have never made it to the airport with the initial fuck up because Kenny would have checked our flights early in the morning of our travel. No doubt in my mind, he would have caught the error. That's the fucking difference. I cannot express how pissed off I am right now, Don. I don't want to hear shit as far as this fuck up goes. Do not call me, Eric. We have a real problem, and we need to take an er uh, and we need to talk early next week. Uh oh. So, Don, just in case you thought I calmed down the last two days, absolutely fucking not. And here's how much I care about Opie, because uh, I stayed in Vegas an extra day. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm in Vegas. I, Were you thinking about him as you were I lounging checked, at the pool? I checked my email from yeah, my room. About me in five years. From my suite. Who are you I kidding? checked my email, and I saw Opie's uh, email, very upset, very disturbed. So I you immediately mints off your pillow. Yes, yes, one of the mints. <laughs> I immediately fired off uh, an email to uh, Wickland and said, "How does this affect my flight back? <laughs> I want to make sure this doesn't happen to me." I gotta start thinking about me more. It's all about me. Well, I'm gonna start doing me, me, me. I am in the, um, the me phase of life. It's so easy to do I me, me, me. I don't care. I could give a flying fuck about anyone else. Now, it's all about me, how I can be convenienced, my things, uh, what I do, what I have to do, things like that. I spent too many years just <clears throat> being yes man. Yes man to everybody. What all right, sure thing, I'm on it. Was that like back in like the 30s? Way back. Oh, yeah, in the 30s. Yeah, yeah. You were in high school. That was it. Sure. Me, Charlie Chaplin, <laughs> <laughs> Albert Einstein. I was always grabbing them beakers or whatever yeah, I who needed. Spoke at your graduation. Who was the guest speaker? Oh, the guest speaker? Yeah. Clark Gable. Oh, was it? Yeah, came in and talked about a little about drama. Teen Heartthrob. No, he teen Heartthrob Clark, Clark Gable. Gable. How could you grow this mustache? All right, so there's the deal. And now I got some kind of respiratory thing happening, which is because you're on the plane. Because the plane is nothing but a flying petri dish. I was gonna guess Grover Cleveland. Grover, Grover Cleveland yeah. would have been a good one. That wacky. So they face tried hair. to get him. <laughs> I I I, uh, uh, I had a great day in Vegas after all was said and done. Uh, very hard to catch up on the sleep thing, like you said, with the long flight and everything. But once I was in it. Uh, Keith the cop even was like, you know, he kept coming up to my poker chair, my chair at Holdem, and going, uh, you, you gotta go to bed. You got, I, I get crazy. It's a good thing that the closest casino is, uh, Atlantic City or Mohegan. Yeah. You got, it's an you effort. Really, you it's really gotta a quick, quit to get there. It's not a quick, like, 20 minute drive, you know, to a casino. Cause if it was, I could see me having a problem. I, uh, I went, I guess it was, uh, Saturday. Saturday, Friday, Friday, uh, right after the show, went up, had something to eat. Uh, Friday night, I was at the Hold'em table uh, from, I believe, um, probably eight o'clock at night after dinner. So I, I, I ate. I did not leave that seat. An occasional piss. Same table. Until five in the morning, <laughs> from eight at night till five in the morning. Wow, that was just day one. And then uh, Saturday night, it was from I think uh, sometime in the early evening until um, about one thirty. But I had to get up at four for the flight, so I left the casino at one thirty. That's when Keith came up and was like, uh, the, "I'm gonna be uh, picking you guys up at like five. Jesus. So that's one of those things you sit and then go, okay, here. if I go to bed now, I'll get six hours. Oh. If I go to bed now, I'll get four hours. You know what? I'll just stay up. I'll sleep on the plane. I was, that's what I said. I'm looking at my watch every minute, just going, all right, a little long. And I'd set a goal for myself and go, all right, dude, by 11, 11 o'clock, I'm back in the room. And then 11 rolls around, and you're like, I'm kind of on a roll here. I'm just going to keep playing 1130. Second I start losing. And that, yeah, second I start, I'm not gonna drop money here now. Second I start losing, I'm out. And, and you look at your watch and casino time blows by so fast, uh, that, you know, you look and another hour goes by. No. So you gotta make a new goal for yourself. You don't even go to, you don't even get sleepy. You're like that chick from the ring. 
You just sitting there, the clocks move. Actually, they, there's no clocks no, there, is no, there? No, no clocks, no, no clocks windows, in a casino. No Phil. concept of Jesus. time whatsoever. And then he's just sitting there with his hair in his yeah. face like that chick who crawls out of the well. Just, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just sit there. They want you. They don't want you to know what time it is or anything. Oh, it's yeah. all set up. The the temperature. It, they they've worked out the temperature where it's perfect temperature to keep you awake. And wanting to stay there, the colors they pick. It's I've not, seen these casino shows on Discovery, on Discovery and stuff. It's not a it, the casino is a little cold actually, didn't you think? But it's supposed to be just to keep you awake. If you're if you're a little warm, you get a little drowsy. They don't want drowsy. They mm-hmm. want you staying awake and gambling. The color scheme is set up in a way where they've actually done studies where certain color combinations keep you awake and make you want to stay there and they're pleasing to the eye i saw a show on uh, vegas and casinos you know these fucking bastards also uh, uh lay the rugs down in a way so if you drop a chip it's really hard to find it <laughs> because if you notice is that the reason for those uh, they have the ugliest Dude, carpet i look saw at the a color. show they basically have rugs that will blend into the the chips the color of the carpet Will always match the color of the bigger money chips. Right. So, like if it's a purple black uh, green combination on there, there's this purple black green carpet to make that's it harder very, for you to find your chip. Very, the colors are very intertwined in pattern. They're not big like squares or anything. They're very small uh, uh, color combinations of the same color as the chip. So if you drop a chip, it falls down. And uh, later on, I guess the cleaning crew is known to. To have to give these things back, you're not leaving with it. They have to give it uh, back. I would, I would gather they cannot just leave with a. a I was wondering why those rugs chip. were so, just so brutally ugly. They are brutal like that, so that chips will get lost on them, and and I'm sure they have, they probably have people whose job it is is to walk around the casino. Maybe they have another job, but part of it is to look down and look for chips on the floor and yeah. just pick them up. And there's probably millions in revenue per year yeah, you gotta think that, that they get just in lost chips. you got to think people are dropping a lot of chips Yeah, in, a, in that situation. You've, you've seen some drunks. So they're drunk. Psh, and the chip pile goes flying. They pick up a few. Yeah. All right, let's uh, move on to the phones. Keith in Jersey. Keith, what's up? Well, I initially just had one short comment, which was, Opie, travel diva. Travel diva. Do you guys realize that when somebody screws up like this and Opie comes in all pissed off, it makes for the best goddamn radio. He's hysterical when he's pissed. Well, uh, maybe they do it on purpose. Thank you, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, that's probably it. They do it on purpose. I'm going to be listening to this on a replay all goddamn day. All right, thanks there, uh, Keith. All right. Um, Speaking of pissed off, Eric found... You and I talking about XM Satellite Radio when we were on commercial radio? This is classic. This is priceless. We'll do it after the break. And it shows the insight that your pals Opie and Anthony well, have. We like to say uh, as many times as we can that we're brilliant broadcasters. Brilliant. We, we don't just say that we're brilliant broadcasters. We prove it to you. Back it up. We back it up. We saw the future before anyone did. We saw the future of this and f- and saw the threat in it to terrestrial radio. You're damn right. I'm just seeing, uh, uh, are we going to continue with the casino thing? No. Okay. Well, you want to do it now or you want to take a break? Uh, you know, that ain't my fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're, you're the point. Said it's about me. I said it's about me. I don't uh, do that. You don't want me to figure start, it out. You don't want me to start doing a me, me, me show, dude. <laughs> Trust me. It, you sound real cocky, but if you want me to play, sound real cocky. If you want me to play the me, me, me game, trust me. Ooh, I thought oh, this, this was little a Texas show. Hold trust here. me. This little Texas hold him here, huh? He just raised you. What do you got to say about that, huh? He just raised me. I uh, let me look at my hand. I'm it's buy, all cute, me, me, I'm me. I'm buying like, a house. I'm gonna fold. <laughs> Uh, I gotta buy a house. No drama. I need this job. All right, we'll take a quick break. You guys break. have a nice argument. I thought we were gonna play it. Nah, we'll take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking take a break. <laughs> Trust me, we'll take a break. Thanks, Don, for putting me in a great mood today. I really appreciate it. You're doing a great job for us. It's wonderful. You're checking out the Opie and Anthony program. Bill Burr sitting in for Jim Norton today. See. Mark has a question from Coral Springs. Mark, what's up? Uh, did you guys catch that giant game yesterday? The Ha-ha. Giants. Holy shit. Big boo. I knew I was the answer. 
Uh, yeah, the front page of the Post here in New York. Big Boo instead of Big Blue. And Newsday's got uh, know what Big Blue It. Get it? Oh, they blew it. <laughs> Leading up to the game, uh, the papers were reporting this could be their year. They seem to have all the right pieces in the right positions, and holy crap, they didn't even show up yesterday. What was it, 23 nothing Panthers? Yeah. Yeah. An embarrassment. Eli needs to get uh, his color, his eyesight checked. Now, Eli Manning, uh, he's improved uh, greatly since last year. He's going to be a fine quarterback. It's just too early. Guys have yeah, been doing well, it like, two seasons so far. The big choke. Yeah, he well, he's definitely got Plaxico, he, Shockey. He definitely choked yesterday, though, and and then the, yeah. the Pats had a good game. Ah, of course, that's ah, right. Ah, of course they did. Ah, it's got to be Pats. Bam and Indy. It's only right. Yeah, you think? Yeah, has mm. to be. That would be a pretty, has to be. If pretty cool. If the Patriots game. go in, and and uh, if they actually beat Indy in Indy, that will be my favorite victory ever. Well, not ever. Uh it would be Maybe up there. Ever. It would be up there. Might be right they were all there. talking shit after they beat us in November. It's like half our team was in a mash unit, and they're all like, Ooh, <laughs> you avenged the loss. <laughs> what, you beat us in November? You, you really our, happy with that? You, you beat our B team. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I hate, when, I hate when people do that to you. Dude, come on. Look at look at my uh, lineup here. No one was playing. <laughs> all right, Mark, thank you. All right, thanks, guys. All right, bro. It's a very, very busy day. <clears throat> Very busy. Yeah. Day. A lot of excitement because Howard's starting his uh, his satellite radio career. Hoo hoo! You can just hear the excitement. Wait, listen. Wow! Did I hear? No, I thought I did. <laughs> For a second, I thought I did. Wow! But no. Anyway, um, speaking of satellite radio, we you know had... what? Uh, uh, quickly, he 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 may be vindicated a bit in my eyes. Why? In such a way. Because he, he goes to satellite, and he starts doing things, and it, it is annoying when people do the things you did when you first started in a medium. When we first came to satellite radio, uh, we, we saw the freedom and opportunity to do things and play certain things and react to them in a certain way. And then to see him go on and uh, hear about um, things that we did when we first got, I mean, verbatim. And just things being played and done and said and scenarios being played through that are, I got to say, exactly like what went on here. Right. Everything from how we handled the technical glitches on the air uh, to certain material that we played eight months ago. Right down to playing George Carlin. To the George Carlin opener. We thought that was the only the way. Seven to dirty words. To start your career on satellite radios to do the, yeah, seven dirty words. Seven dirty words, which we started uh, when we, we did when we first uh, came on. I mean, the Pat O'Brien tapes, I'm getting uh, reports from the uh, the he's, pests. Well, this is what's amazing, and uh, he's just going to do it to himself. He's playing the Pat O'Brien sex tapes and saying it's the first time that uh, these tapes have been heard uncensored. Yeah, what? <laughs> we got press on the fact that Holy we were playing shit. them. We pull- uncensored, you ass. And in true O&A style, we drove that shit into the ground. That's right. <laughs> we played it till you didn't want to hear it anymore. That's right. But there you go, you know, he's had a long time to think about what to do on satellite radio, and that's that's how he opens up his uh, yeah his new career, by playing the Pat O'Brien section. Yeah, but he had a, an interesting little take on it. He played Prince's Let's Get Crazy on top of it. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Kind of did that, too. Hoo-hoo. <laughs> now we're the guys. Hoo-hoo. We, we started that. We were doing that. We were doing that eight months ago. Tell him, Derek. All of all of serious radio rips me off. We tie a bandana around Pat O'Brien's car and listen to him curse. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, yeah, what? like you know, what we just worked on what, um, which is just crazy when you hear him that way. Uh, we have all the Pat O'Brien tapes now on Central. <gasps> we got to save those you know, me and Monday. Betsy and a whore. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. That was yeah, a, it was. That's a whole new thing. And then I know Dan was putting together all new songs with right. him. Right. Oh, my God. Putting together all new songs with him. Yeah. It's you, the same shit we did. You know it's going to be awesome because you heard it. Yeah, you, you heard, heard it. You escalate, you fucking asshole. You saw the reaction to it. It was well received. We got press on it. Oh, my God. God. Can I tell you something? He should be in jail. I'll tell you something. I missed the whole first time, I guess, with the bleeping. I never realized he said that he wanted to beat off in her face. 
You yeah, because, you, you, you know, yeah, that's... Yeah, the plate was so big, you couldn't tell what That's that a was. very important part of the puzzle that he wants to beat off on her face. I mean, that's a major violent act, it as really, far as I'm concerned. It really is. How many women's faces have you beat off on? Honestly. This is a stranger None. he's well, talking like to. Right. You, i got to hear that again. That's Did you right, say beat off yeah, on your face? Yeah. Yeah. It's shocking. I thought he said come on your face. It beat off? Yeah. I think he said beat off. He definitely says beat off, yeah. What? He definitely. He definitely says beat off. If you want, Howard, we have the... Now say that again. He definitely says beat okay, off. I'm just I'm playing with the board. If you wanted to, you could go to the individual clips, but maybe we save them for another day. Jesus Christ. Sounds very familiar, doesn't it? Wow. But see, everyone rips him off. But it's, you know, but his, ooh, first ooh, first day. Ooh, ooh. his first opportunity on satellite radio, he's blatantly uh, doing something we did very well and got pressed for doing it. It was the way. great. And, and to have satellite radio available to you to play those tapes uncensored is a blast. And it was for us when the tapes came out about eight months ago. A long, long time a ago. A long time ago. And we did, and we played the songs uh, over them because it's funny as shit to do. And we had the listeners do their own remixes. The listeners sent in their remixes, and that's when the bit ends because that's when it gets really bad because the listeners, for the most part, stink. It was one of our <laughs> it was one of our best bits since coming to Satellite Radio, the right. Brian sex tapes and the remixes. God. So we want to go to that well again. I got yeah. in a hold of Steve last night. And uh, the Emily Stern audio is up on OpenAnthony.com. Yes, it is. And the video. Where she talks about her big Jewish tits. Yes. And uh, we're looking for remixes, everybody. Remixes from the listeners, please. Yes. We did the first one. And uh, quite frankly. Now, Opie, wait a minute. Quite frankly, it's, it's lame. And we know that. And you guys called us out on the fact that it's lame. Opie, before you put that in the uh, player there, what did I miss say? Oh, you want now, to Imus? Now, yes, because cause Imus, <clears throat> Imus is like the patriarch of this program. And I think uh, we ought to listen to him when he said, please, maybe we shouldn't goof on Stern's daughter. Right. Well, this is what Imus said. We couldn't really uh, tackle this this bit uh, in Vegas because we only had two hours. Two hours in front of a dopey live audience. Uh, but uh, we're going to tackle this bit now, oh, aren't yeah. we? So this is what Imus had to say. Howard Stern's daughter, Emily, has abruptly been pulled out of an off-Broadway show in which she appeared stark naked. Yeah. And there are some pictures in the post, too. Yeah. I'll leave the guys and the Daily News. And the Daily News. But it's a, it's a wild shot with... Uh, she's playing, actually, Madonna right. in the show Triad, which uh, is, you know, obviously, it's, it's about the Kabbalah and the fo- famous follower of Kabbalah, which is Madonna. And so she appears in these yellow panties and a cone bra and in the finale the rabbi who's the executive director of the show tells her that if she gets naked Mm -hmm. the messiah will come and she strips off all of her clothes and then the rest of her cast also gets nude and then they worship her body parts Hmm. and it was panned in the new york times as dreadful mind-numbing and in bad taste how great would it be though if she ended up on opie and anthony you know sticking cucumbers in her private parts i mean (laughs) wouldn't the irony be something to behold there or no i mean is it not Something here is that laughing, some looking twist for a, that's sort of a looking for a silver lining. Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, leave the guys kid alone. <laughs> so there's Imus. Leave the guys kid alone. Leave the guys uh, kid alone. By the way, we brought this yeah. to the attention yeah. of the uh, media, the whole Emily Stern thing. And uh, here's Imus begging us to lay off uh, Howard's daughter. Yeah. And here's what I want to say. And I just hope Opie and Anthony, uh, and you know, I'm very close to Opie. I, in fact, I think he may be my son. Yes. And I do like him. I, I just, uh, I would, I would say to them, just let's not, let's just lay off the Howard Stern daughter story. I think there's some things that, you know. But if they do that, then they're 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 pussies. Yes. They have to go after her and him. Well, I would be very disappointed in them if they were to do that. It, it, it's I would, I would implore them and beg them here this morning on right. my program, the Irish Women program. To uh, just uh, rise above it. Rise above that. Sure. O- is... o- ONA, this is your morning to rise above that. I, I hope and, you do that. And right? not, not to challenge the stripped naked appearance of <laughs> Emily Stern in this one, I guess, is just an atrocious off Broadway show. Mm-hmm. Just... Off, off Broadway. Some things that ought to be off limits, and I just. Uh, Take the high road, boys. I just. Uh, I'm just. <laughs> right. Poor and beg my friends, Opie and Anthony, and as I said, I must go to Opie to, to try to take the high road. Because as Kinky said, there's no mud on the high road. So hopefully, I'll get a report later today on whether, in fact, <laughs> they took my advice. They, unfortunately, often do not. <laughs> With that said, uh, Mr. Imus, we hear you loud and clear. Yes, and please. that's why we're starting this brand new bit on the Opie and Anthony right. program. This brand new bit. 
<laughs> Man, if that wasn't uh, good cop, bad cop, where they're both really bad cop. Yeah. Well, stop it. Now, uh, an interesting side note on that. When that audio came in, didn't our own E-Rock say, guys, I don't get it. I'm just, uh, is really saying, for you, uh, you know, pleading that you guys don't goof <laughs> on uh, Howard's daughter. Right. Like, he didn't see through that yeah. at all. He didn't hear the sarcasm Whatever in Imus' voice. Whatever you do, for the love yeah, of God. For the love right, of right. God, for all that is holy, please do not talk about Emily uh, badly. Yeah. Guys, again, let me reiterate, don't do that. And uh, E-Rock tells us, you know, Imus is saying not to uh, uh, goof on the situation. And uh, if, uh, I was like, wow, really? That's odd of, of Imus to, to say. Because Imus loves uh, <laughs> when we bash Stern. And then you Absolutely listen to loves it. Yeah. If you run the tape backwards, I'm sure you hear some sort of evil Imus voice of telling you to do it. Of course you do. Make fun of her daughter. Uh, <laughs> make fun of the whore. I don't care. <laughs> but E-Rock, oh, guys. Guys, E Rock, you oh, want to defend yourself? Oh, e -Rock. Face value, E Rock. That you want to try? That was before I got the audio. That was based on what everybody was sending in saying, oh, Imus is telling you guys not to do it. Then I got the audio. You heard the it. audio and then told us, obviously, Imus is being is he sarcastic. Are you blaming the right? listeners? No. No, you didn't tell us that. No, you after continued. that, I said, I have the audio, and that was the last I have I the audio of Imus saying that you shouldn't make fun of Emily Stern. That's all I said. Instead of going, wow, the guy really is sarcastic in this. It's pretty funny and pretty obvious. He, he, it's pretty obvious he wants us to goof He's on going him. Nudge, nudge. <laughs> okay. All I said was, I have e -rock. the audio. <laughs> e Rock, he doesn't get sarcasm. <laughs> wow. Well, we got Rob on Long Island. He's got a problem with us. A faithful listener of the show. Rob, what's up today? How you doing, guys? All right. Hey, um, I just think that that you guys are above that. But actually, no, after hearing, we're after not. hearing, after hearing Imus, I, I really didn't know. I mean, he really does want you to. So Howard, uh, Howard blessing. spent many, many hours uh, during his career making fun of uh, people's kids. Many, many hours wishing AIDS on some. Uh, Built a career on wishing AIDS on general managers, uh, w w uh, uh, goofing on people's children, constantly goofing on people's children, calling out uh, 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 people, other radio personalities that are very close to this program and their children. Brother Weez. Right, Brother Weez. I'll say it, Brother Weez, when uh, Howard went into Rochester, New York, just was uh, just killing one of Weez's that was daughters. His first thing that killing. he did. Weez's daughter. And how old was she at the time? Uh, I don't even know. It was, it was, I don't it. want to get too much into it, but basically, Howard just went right after Weez's daughter. Right after that was first he's such thing a he nice did. guy. Not real nice guy. So go fuck yourself. And the guy has done nothing but rag on the children of celebrities when they trip up, when they fuck up. That's the first thing he does. And, and, and what he does is, and what he's done over the years, and any, any fan or anybody who's listened to him would know this, he goofs on the parent and says, what type of parenting are they doing that this child goes out and does this? Well, Howie, the, the same type you did. The same type that uh, got into that situation at the Jingle Ball uh, a couple of years back. You might remember that one where uh, we have uh, police uh, reporting that you and your, your estranged wife at the time were in the hospital waiting room crying as there was a situation taking place inside that uh bad parenting if you ask me not being there when you're on the air uh, uh yelling about your clones wanting uh your acceptance and using your catchphrase love me daddy all they want to do are uh, these other jocks they uh, just want my attention they're trying to get my attention love me daddy love me daddy well you should have maybe taken that love me daddy and turned it toward your children so maybe maybe your 22 year old daughter wouldn't be naked uh, with those luscious, huge Jewish tits up on that stage, uh, talking about her cunt and her ass and her tits up on a stage if daddy was there for her, instead of uh, uh, greedily trying to sign a, a contract for a few extra bucks. Maybe if you were there for your, for your children, they wouldn't end up like so many of the uh, children of the celebrities that you goofed on and built a, a fucking... Uh, career on. 
and now we're supposed to sit back and not say anything? Uh, take the high road? No. You know something? We're not above the high road. No. We can be just as big as scumbags. And the Pat O'Brien sex tapes, that bit was so great for us. we got to do it again, and we'll we'll just use the Emily Stern audio. Right. See what the listeners come up with. Okay. The dirtier, the better, by the way. <laughs> the filthier, the better. Here's the unedited audio of uh, Emily Stern in this uh, really, really awful, awful, way off Broadway uh, uh, play. <laughs> it's in Long Island. It's way off Broadway. <laughs> Some Jewish theater group. What kind of... Sexual, spiritual, spiritual, sexual, both and in all, sexual, spiritual, all like hell, the name of God, my breasts, my white shining legs, my vagina, my ass are all godly, breasts in Hebrew, Shad, God in Hebrew, Shaddai, Shaddai in Hebrew also means my <laughs> I'm so happy I'm in the Kabbalah Center. I learned so much. I now meditate on letters T-I-T and everybody will immediately notice my tits. Letters T-I-T. Come hither. Theater. Theater. It's, it's, it's the theater. We're going to the theater. And then horrific it was off. is the opposite of deep. And sleep when the piece at the beginning is bad news to be at the end is great. Deep. Don't preach. Sleep. Keep. Papa, don't preach. I'm in trouble deep. Papa, don't preach. I've been losing sleep. But I made up my mind. I keep in my baby. I'm gonna keep my baby. Yeah, the retarded Turn it off. Wizard of Oz. Turn it off! Why are you spitting on me? Is this how this is? Oh. Okay, here you go. Oh. First of all, it's absolutely awful acting. Hey, I, yeah, I don't care who is in that part. Yeah, let's just start with uh, saying that. It's let's just, just critique awful, the audio. Awful horrid acting. Horrid. So, so uh, what, what do you do with, with material like that? I mean, it's just... Hey, who who wrote that shit? They're like trying to make fun of Madonna, I guess. You could say no, yeah. though. <laughs> you could say yeah. no. You want to be an actor? Try another part. Yeah. Try another part. Yeah. Hey, you could, <laughs> you're Howie's daughter. I'm sure that you get some, hey, you got some just, cash. Yeah. Just because you're Howie's daughter. I guess it's a big ensemble cast, and uh, they each have their different take on the Kabbalah, and hers is the you know latest celebrity craze take on it, and she chooses a Madonna type character and. At the end, she uh, rips her clothes off. Yeah. That's good. For and there may or may not play. be uh, naked pictures of Howard's daughter out there. I haven't seen any of the naked ones. Yeah, yet. I haven't really seen them. I haven't seen them yet. I haven't seen them. That's right. I haven't seen them. So uh, that audio is up on opianthony.com. We're looking for remixes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And even uh, I think some of our guys are going to try the old uh, remix game. People love doing the remixes at home. The we, filthier, the better. We made a quick one. Mm -hmm. People hate it. <laughs> really? They hate it, but this is what we came up with fast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. I've got Allison. <laughs> Allison. She's the best friend I could ever have. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to lose his mind when the remixes start coming in. This bit had to start somewhere. It's Mama! <laughs> <laughs> the bits, you know, it's off to a slow start, but yeah. we'll see what happens as the Get days there. go on here. The Emily Stern remix uh, contest starts today. Love me, daddy. Love me, daddy. The audio's up on opianthony.com. Uh, people are suggesting uh, what to do with that. Well, yeah, prime right. music would be nice. Uh-huh. <sighs> Tell him, Fred. Ooh. <laughs> so there you have that. How long? How long before she is in uh, some radio studio with guys throwing baloney at her ass <laughs> or laser pointering her thighs, tits? 
possible. If that isn't a cry, do, do I have to spell it out? She seems. Uh, yeah. Is, here's, is, here's is there somebody blushing. really thinking maybe this is her just wanting to branch out and be an actress, or do I have to fucking sit here and spell out the fact that this girl is trying her damnedest? to get back at daddy and get daddy's attention by being naked. And this is step number one. And we all know what the final step is. We all know what the final step Well, the final ultimate step would be, as was suggested, being here on this program. With cucumbers? With getting a cucumber up the twat. That's the goal. Oh. But at a, at a uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner, when uh, she brings home none other than Patrice O'Neill. As her new boyfriend, <laughs> Howie. <laughs> Why do you have to go the black route? Because that Chris would... Chris O'Neill is a fine gentleman. I know that. And he would make a very nice husband. But for, it is known that some white there. girls, to get back at daddy, bring home black guys. <laughs> you want more gangster than uh, Patrice? Yeah. Who do you think would be good? I don't know if it's a black-white thing. It certainly is. In the Jewish family? She seems to just be a wild one. She just seems to be wild. You think a little wild? Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know. Some people can't pick a script, though. Yeah. Some people just aren't good at it. Yeah, right. Somebody maybe ought to read over her scripts and say, uh, no, I don't think this one's for Like you. I said, you could say no. You could say no. Uh, well, lots of reaction on the phones right now. Tex in Arkansas. Tex, what's up? Hey, guys. Today is the last day of my job. I quit. I stay at home with my daughter for the rest of her life so she doesn't embarrass me, and she turns out to be a good kid and nothing like Emily Stern. This is my last day of work. I'm officially giving notice this morning. Oh, and Howard was livid. He bit, he made her quit the play and everything. He was beyond yeah. pissed off. little spin on that one was that uh, the director promised not to let her name out and uh, make any tie between her and Howard, and once that was broken, that confidence was broken, she quit. Yeah, because the kind of yeah. person who would write something that is so trustworthy. Yeah, doesn't want to capitalize. No, no, it. not at all. He's but, not just trying to get some actress in there naked with a little name on. Uh, but I don't think that that's the case anyway. Wow, the article is great. The, I only read the Post article when we were in Vegas. Mm -hmm. uh, Stern daughter rudely exposed to stage world. The writer-director of Kabbalah, an off-Broadway religious satire in which cast members stripped naked yesterday, blasted female lead Emily Stern as a Jewish-American princess for abruptly quitting the show and called her famous father, uh, Howard Stern, a psycho. Israeli-born stage maven Tuvia Tenenbaum, who runs the Jewish Theater of New York, told me he canceled the run when the 22-year-old actress who played Madonna in the show bowed out after six weeks at the Triad Theater on West 73rd Street because a couple of Howard Stern fan sites exposed her celebrity uh, parentage. We were looking for a talented actress to replace her, uh, this guy says. But after Stern fan site outed her, Emily was distraught. She said she was freaked out and had to quit, but I told her she was behaving like a Jap, just what she promised me she would not do, said the 48-year-old Tenenbaum, a former Orthodox rabbi who moved to the United States, blah, blah, blah. After I cast her in late September, her father called her in for a meeting. Uh -huh. Tenenbaum recounted. She came back very shaken. She said, my father basically told me that if I take the role, which requires her to be on stage nude for the last 10 minutes, that his enemies would buy blocks of tickets, <laughs> throw garbage at my vagina, take nude pictures of me, and put them all over the Internet. I told Emily, you have to stand up for yourself as a human being and as an individual. <laughs> we have a winner. <laughs> and separate from your father. Your father's a psycho. Your father is selfish. Howard Stern's manager, Don Buckwald, refused to discuss the situation. He called me an unprintable name. He added sarcastically, you're a noted journalist, and I look forward to reading one of your epic stories. Uh, and it just goes on. That, uh, disowned. Huh? Sounds, sounds to me like she's disowned. Like he put the law down and she said, fuck you. Right. I'm doing this anyway. Right. I'm my own woman. More quotes from Howard about this. He told her, if you're in that show, a lot of people are going to use it against me. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Mm. I and told her, did. this is Tenenbaum again, your father's a brilliant entertainer, but he's very selfish towards you. And I said I would keep it a secret that she was Howard Stern's daughter, but she had to promise me she wouldn't quit, so we went ahead. And there you have it. Well, the audio's up on opianthony.com. We will and do there is video. And the video is up too. Yeah, somewhere? yeah. That's up on uh, OP and dot com. Yeah, I'm you assuming. can check that out. Get getting, to it. That's getting lots and lots of hits. Mm -hmm. As well as Pat from Monaki. Cribs is up and running. Oh, I saw that last night. It is so tragic. He is uh, impoverished. The guy is living in squalor. They could not describe it over these airwaves as uh, well as this video uh, shows. It is a shithole. He lives in an 
absolute shithole trailer. We did like an MTV That's a cruise. tragic story. Oh. Like VH1 behind the music, former eggnog drinking champion. Right. Look at what has become of him. And Wasted there are his some... his fortune. <laughs> yeah, his, his eggnog drinking fortune. What did he get for that? <laughs> he got residuals and stuff. Yeah, yeah sure. You, when, when you see some of the things in this trailer, I think the most tragic parts are where he goes into this, I, I guess it's a closet. I can't tell what, what part of that trailer is a closet or a bathroom or anything. It's just like... It, one mess leads into another, <laughs> and he, he it's sh- like one big dirty closet. It is. It's a big like a storage facility. Tennis rackets and shit laying it's around. Hard, but there were things like just in the middle of the floor, and I didn't get the layout. It wasn't that. What's that uh, Asian uh, way of setting up a house? So it's oh, all in feng sync. shui. Feng shui. I wasn't feeling the feng shui of his uh, trailer. <laughs> His box of trophies was the most depressing part of it. From his eating competition? No, from his younger days oh, as a no. wrestler oh, in no. high school. Oh. And he has pictures of himself all young and virile, <laughs> manly. Ten, not, ten toes. Yeah, ten toes. <laughs> not the freak he is now. Pictures of him being vile. Going vile. Back, going back to last going back week. A little, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, and he, he, Self-abuse there. He kind of goes, here's my... Uh, yeah." Box of broken trophies from <laughs> days gone by, and and he takes the top part, yeah. and it's him doing some, you know, the the tro- top of the trophy, some physical activity, and he's just spinning it around, and it's kind of broken, <laughs> like they've all just been thrown in a box and and forgotten, just like the reality of that. Some years of being evicted and having to leave yeah, them. having to move, and how many how many times has that box been shoved in the back of a shit car? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even unpack them anymore. He knows he's leaving soon. So uh, it was really tragic. And uh, the video is now up. Pat from Monaki's Cribs. And, and they do it just like MTV's Cribs, which makes it really fun. Oh, they even steal the whole beginning Steal clip the intro everything. of yeah, uh, the real great. Cribs and all I that. I'm going to see this. It's really good. It's an old bit we've been doing for a while. We haven't... Uh, well, this is the first one in a few years now. Yep. Pat from Monaki, what's up? How did you like hey. your Cribs on the, on, uh, on the website there? Oh, it was spectacular. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did, did you did you did you watch it the whole thing? Yes, I did. And uh, any favorite parts? Uh, hmm. I I kind of like my my memories falling off my refrigerator and shattering on the floor. <laughs> and then the then the magnets wouldn't even hold it onto the, the refrigerator. Yeah, that was pretty funny when it yeah. just slid off the refrigerator. Picture him. He goes, ah, even the magnets won't hold me up. Uh, like his actual weight is in the picture. I still haven't seen the video. i got to check it out later. The end is really classic where they, because uh, everyone for some reason has to be coached as to how the, the episodes of Cribs end. On MTV, they always end with the camera crew leaving and the person uh, that uh, whose crib it is by the door going, well, goodbye, thank you, MTV, for stopping by, and then they go back in the house. Basically saying it's time to leave, get yeah, out of yeah. here. And for some reason, they never know and always have to be told by the video crew. So Pat says goodbye, and then he's kind of standing there, and you hear Dan or somebody say, uh, Danny, I'm not sure who it was, say, um, you're supposed to just wave and go back into your place and shut the door. He goes, oh, okay, well, goodbye, thank you. He he shuts the door. You hear something fall. He opens the door and goes, oh, my speaker fell over. <laughs> and they zoom back in the door, and there's this big speaker laying on the floor. It's just a, nothing goes right. That's great. All right, Pat. We'll all check it out later today. How's the cat? Okay. And, and oh, the cat's fine. Uh, and everybody, stop donating money. I do not want money. Yeah. Uh, obviously, he's being sarcastic. No one's donating money. Um, there, well, I've read the message boards where they're saying that um, me and you are selfish and greedy because we haven't hooked up Pat or uh, Stalker Patty, who now owes like two thousand dollars in back rent. Uh, like, Do you want us to spend a half hour uh, telling you guys what we've done for Stalker Patty over the years? Um, it's not no. even funny at this point. No, there's it's no unbe- humor in it. No, but it's unbelievable how much we have given Stalker Patty. I wouldn't worry about Patty. But that's not the type of thing we do on this show. Get Pat. He just wants to touch something. Get him a kayak and pick up that cat with leukemia. Bring him out of that trailer. Wait, he's uh. Touch my toe. Uh, wait, wait, you got nine hundred sixty-two dollars? I don't have nine hundred sixty-two on what? There, what's that on, Eric? That's the uh the PayPal thing set up. That's how much has been donated so far to Pat. 
What is that um, donation thing? Uh, what What are the other names? Who Who donated? Yeah, they list the names of everybody who donated and how much they donated. And that goes to Pat how? I refuse. I guess they cash it out and give him a check from it. When? Whenever they decide to end it. Like, is that just a bank of Pat now? You can go in and write checks off of that? There's one for Patty, too. Well, and the, Patty's up to $325, and and Pat from Minaki's, uh just under 1000 It's well, a where tax can deduction, deduction, right? It is a tax deduction. There you go. Where can you get to that page? Right off OpianAnthony.com. Right off OpianAnthony.com. The O&A Disaster Relief Fund, it's titled. Yeah. <laughs> and there's one for Stalker <laughs> Patty, one for <laughs> Pat from Minaki. Stalker <laughs> Patty, is that her sitting on her bed? What is that? A stalker Patty needs three uh, thirty four hundred dollars, mm -hmm. so she could pay her rent, her back rent. She got backed up thirty four hundred bucks in rent. Uh, the description for stalker Patty: one mandible, no future, hungry. In all seriousness, give as much as you can. She is due to be evicted this month. Jesus, we need to raise thirty four hundred bucks to uh, 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 so she can pay her rent. Does she have a job? Does she work? Yeah, yeah, she, she works, works pretty hard. Good actually, but chocolate. She, uh, she <laughs> good deal. I don't think Good XM's gonna allow either. her to to live here. No, not like, like the NW. old place. The old place she lived under the stairs for a while. Uh, Pat from Minaki, nine toes, one trailer, all heart. In all seriousness, give as much as you can. He lives in a shit box. We also plan to uh, re uh, uh, wait. We also plan to renovate his trailer and give this decent guy a home fit for a human being. See, here's the problem with that trailer. Do you need a human being for that. <laughs> <laughs> what an ass you are. <laughs> here's, here's the problem. I uh, I dabbled in construction for a, a while there, Opie. I, uh, so from what I saw on videotape, this thing is irreparable. There is no renovating this trailer. First of all, it's, it's an actual trailer. trailer. Oh, it's yeah. Trailer. Fall There's apart. no renovating it. There's no clearing it out, putting new stud work. The, the whole framework of this thing is a rusted, decrepit mess. It should be condemned. A, a, a drug addict shouldn't be living in this thing. Since it's technically a vehicle, it would be called totaled. <laughs> <laughs> His home is totaled. totaled. You know what I like that wasn't really mentioned on the uh, on the air was the uh, the duct tape that you have in your bathtub from the wall to the bathtub where there's usually caulking yeah. where nice tile work meet the tub and there's caulking there uh it's like drywall just some kind of drywall in the well, shower the co coated board coated board yeah it's coated with more mildew than i've ever seen that, that's not mildew it was coated and then underneath it's brown it's a brown piece of board, and from from cleaning it, don't laugh at that. I'm uh, laughing. From cleaning it, the yellow wore off, and you see the brown underneath. It's not mildew because mildew has a specific smell, and I do not have mildew. All yeah, right, I wasn't the there. The are in your lungs. Yeah, yeah I wasn't okay. there. I don't know, but I did see the duct tape. Hey, uh, we got a contractor that wants to help you out, Pat. What's your Ooh. email address for these people? Because then there's another guy who wants to do pimp my trailer with you. Ooh. How, how do we? How do they get a hold of you? Me? Yeah. Uh, uh I guess uh, MySpace. MySpace. Uh, Pat from Munaki. Pat from Munaki. MySpace. Yeah. Right. MySpace slash Pat from Munaki, well, and you gotta nervous. know how to spell Munaki. So, M O O N A C H I E. Uh, yeah, it's like Munachi. 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 Hey, Jacob, what's up? How you doing, guys? Hey. Long time fan. Listen, uh, I'm a general contractor in Central Jersey. Uh, I do mostly, you know, renovating on really shit, awful houses. And, uh, I'd love to help Pat out. I spoke with my guys, um, a lot of guys are, you know, willing to help him out. I'd like yeah. to uh, get in touch with Pat, All right. get his address, go out there, to take a look at it. Hey, when you awesome. find the bones of dead hookers, are you going to report it? Uh, that depends. <laughs> you know, if they're all... That's why I bury them at a different location. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jacob, you can get a hold of them through MySpace, okay? All right. Pat from uh, Monarchy at uh, MySpace. Thank you very much. Listen to Hopefully... Me. Hopefully we'll get something going for him. All right. Uh, Pat? I, I just wanted to make clear that I do not want money from ONA fans. All right. But you'll take it. No, no. 
<laughs> you should take a little of it. How about some eggnog? Just take a little you of need it. it. All right, Pat. Actually, you give it to Patty. I authorize transfer to Patty for her yeah, rent. You, you need it. Yeah, you need yeah, a Stop help. being a martyr. Your life is fucked up and you need help. And the listeners will help you. Well, can't argue with that. <laughs> They're good that way. <laughs> all right, Pat. We'll all check out Pat from Monarchy Cribs up on yeah. opianthony.com. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. There he goes. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. Never He's knew like how an insecure, like, Curly Howard. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of woo, but a boop, 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 he just kind of he just <laughs> never knew how appropriate that car crash was though. Uh, every time he talks, because uh, that trailer, swear to you, looks like it has been in a wreck, in yeah. some type of highway wreck. I didn't know anybody like in the immediate New York City area lived in a trailer. He lives right by Teterboro Airport, so during the segment, you're constantly hearing jet planes taking off. Like he's just every bad thing about a place to live is there where he is location. The trailer, he, he uh, rents a slab. It's a slab of concrete that you pull your trailer on and, and hook the water up and the power. And it's something like $700 a month he pays for this. Yeah. For a hovel. All right. Bill Burr sitting in for Jim Norton on the way. We'll do the XM thing. This oh, is yeah. really great audio. Very That's insightful. why we call ourselves brilliant broadcasters. We'll do it next. We, we saw that satellite radio was going to be a real problem when we were doing commercial radio. And E-Rock, uh, while we were in Vegas, he dug up some old tape of us just losing our minds because the station we were on at the time, WNEW in New York, they were, uh, they were accepting XM commercials that we had to play during our show. And we just lost our mind. Absolutely. Because we saw the future. It was right there. And, uh, and the station was too dumb to see it for themselves. And we couldn't believe that. So we got that on the way. Also, uh, free radio ads by celebrities. We love this. Uh huh. They're trying to combat. Uh, they're trying to to combat. I guess. Yeah. Trying to, uh, you know, combat. Combat. Mm hmm. I'm losing it. I'm I'm getting sicker by the hour. I'm not even. Sicker. Not even kidding. Me. I'm losing my mind. Um. <clears throat> anyway, we got uh, celebrities doing free radio. You know, the, how radio should be free. Should be free, man. And, and these uh, these commercials are hilarious because they're just stupid. Mm -hmm. They're just stupid and they're they not. They must be getting scared now. All of a sudden. They're Absolutely they're getting scared. It was nothing before. It was just, eh, it's a thing. It's a fad. That'll go you away. You know what that's like? That's like network TV when, like, cable, cable. first came out. Yeah. Ah, exactly. Home box office. Yeah. And what when you that? read those friggin' message boards, the radio message boards, New York radio message board, uh... They always say, whenever anyone, anybody brings up the network TV, cable TV analogy, as far as the um, uh, terrestrial radio and, and uh, satellite radio go, they go, oh, that no, that's something completely different. What? No, it isn't. How? It's, it's the exact same thing. It is so exact same thing. <laughs> it is not completely different. Same thing. Yeah. People saying uh, that no one's going to pay for it. It's something you can get for free. Why are you going to pay? Why? Because the quality is better. You're getting better stuff. Well, it's great audio. It's a great look back because yep. uh, we just lose our minds. And then we talked to our big boss on the radio, and he had some dumb things to say at the time. Of course he did. And then uh, we got the listeners. They've started their own anti-free FM ads because we're fighting back. Yes, why not with our listeners? Yeah, because regular radio is, uh, you know, doing these anti-satellite radio ads. So now our listeners are doing anti-free FM ads. So very racist. Free, no, free, free radio is great, man. You get to listen to half-hour commercials every hour. Yeah. And you, you have your choice of eight different songs that they're playing that month. Eight different songs, commercials that never end. Even the last refuge that y y you had, the news stations. And I've talked about this in the past, the news stations, uh, where you used to be able to pop on, get the quick headlines on my drive-in. So I got like a 20-minute drive-in, not mm -hmm. bad at all. But during that time, I was able to get every friggin' headline from the day Traffic, weather, every bit of info I needed on terrestrial news radio here, 1010 wins. Now, it's three or four morbid hospital commercials. When he got the cancer diagnosis, he went to North Shore Medical Center. <laughs> I love the comparative one that they've been doing. Yeah. It's like, John had a brain aneurysm. Peter had a brain aneurysm. John went to Bob's hospital on the corner of the road. Bob went to North Shore Medical Center. Jim is now sitting there a blubbering, drooling idiot without it. Bob, Bob is, is biking and yeah. enjoying life again. Bob is back at work. With the morbid piano music in the background. I only had to take two it's sick like days. like the Coke and Pepsi wars. Yeah. yeah. 
It and it's every and it used to be once in a while they would do that, but they do. It was mostly news stories. Now it's they pile on these morbid commercials. I can't even tell you how many times. One day we're gonna have to sit down and figure this out. How many times we've almost gotten fired and then we finally did get fired, right? Yeah, I remember. Well, we, got, we got fired twice now, but there are so many times that we almost got fired. And one was when these cancer ads were being played on our show. And we're trying to do a, you know, a comedy show. We, you know, and right. we're like, this is, this is depressing as shit. It's bringing everyone's mood down. You know, we're afternoon drive. Everyone's driving back home. We gotta, we gotta keep it lively and and funny, right? It was the guy from uh, um, Staten Island. Yeah, Staten Island. Uh, Who got in trouble with the whole? Uh, oh, we got in trouble a few times over a lot of things, misrepresentation, and then the big thing was uh, the George uh, Harrison. George thing. Harrison actually went to this hospital that this guy worked for. For this stereotactic radial surgery. And, uh. Tumors of the neck, eyelids, nostrils, and earlobes. This guy would talk about he, tumors. He would talk about tumors you never knew you could get. Never knew! You could get a tumor of the back of the. What? If you have metastases of the neck, head, chest, ear, if you have cancer of the kneecap, the, <laughs> the calf, the heel, the toenail, and that, like that's a, a really good impression. That's that was the delivery. If you on have this a spot. tumor in your waist, yeah, in your waist, <laughs> neck, intestine, liver. It was just this morbid thing. Ben cracks up. He know, knows the guy's name, the story. He actually, when George Harrison had a huge brain tumor, he didn't even know who the fuck he was. Uh, this guy brought in a guitar to have George to have sign. George sign it before he died. This is the host- This is the friggin' oh my guy that was in charge over there, and pff, that got him booted out. But what an ethical fucking asshole this guy is. So the guy was spending a lot of money on our commercial radio show. And with this and delivery, the, the, the no best music thing behind was, it. No bed, right. right. There's no bed, no little piano music. It was just him going, and I, re- I can't remember his name, Psy something? or yeah. I don't know. But it was always, uh, you know, if you have cancer, we have stereotactic radio surgery that pinpoints the tumors and shrinks them in size. Most people get results they are looking for in reduction of tumors of the neck, head, chest, inner ear, thigh, nostril, nostril every friggin' part. And he's just talking about tumors and everything. Dry delivery just like that, no backup music. So we decided, well, the commercial needed backup music. To see how it, was just it less- would change the this guy's morbid delivery, how important music is. Right. And how it changes things. So we decided to put circus music... First, we did the circus music. Then Benny Hill music. And, and it really <laughs> did change it. We tried morbid music, too, and it made it even more morbid yeah. and, and scary. Yeah. But then the happier the music, it kind of made it a fun little delivery. And it was a great bit. We did it for a half hour, 40 minutes, whatever. Oh, boy. <laughs> man, oh, man. Had no idea the guy was spending, I don't know, millions Do you dollars. understand how many millions are spent by this hospital on a yearly basis, and now they want to pull the ads because of you? Do you think Mel Carmison wants to hear that you guys have lost millions of dollars in revenue because I'd like to have that speech to put some music behind it. Fun circus music. <laughs> While we're at it, why won't you leave Howard alone? He's crying big yeah. time. We heard you talk about um, cabbage and um, mayonnaise. Was that a reference to Howard Stern? We need to Because know. he's very angry and we know that you... Because no, Howard it, it is and we, up. we need to get back to him and kiss and his ass And he's freaking out. <clears throat> All right. So why don't we take a break? We'll do the XM uh, satellite radio spots from the old mm-hmm. days. They're really good. And then we'll get into the uh, free radio ads and the anti-free FM ads. All right? Righty, right. Oh, yeah. Pat O'Brien, uh, that's that's what this break started with, the Pat O'Brien uh, sex tapes? Well, yeah. we got one of the remixes that we really like, the, the whole Let's Go Crazy. Mm-hmm. Seems like it's brand new to someone today, but uh, I don't know. One eight of our guys, old. I think it was Derek, came up with this like eight months ago. Check it out. All right, you're checking out the Opie and Anthony program, Bill Barron Studio. You were going to have a DVD? We should oh, talk yeah. about that because we have I stories. Was make, I was going to make a DVD this weekend out at the Punchline. So the guy in you San know, Francisco will yeah, be at yeah. the Punchline? Yeah, we'll either be there this week, Tuesday through Saturday. Sorry. Um, Tuesday through... You're starting tomorrow? Yeah. So you're going to be there wow. just all week like that? Yeah. Nice. That's a little different for you now. The whole week, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I was gonna make this this fucking DVD, and this guy gives me the price. He says it's gonna be three grand a night to shoot. So I go, ah, you know, it's kind of high. And he's like, oh, you know, throws out Fillmore and all these bands he's done and all that shit. So I'm like, all right, you know, I want it to look good. I don't want it to be some piece of shit, you know, somebody's gonna buy. So 
yes, like two days ago, he sends me the email with the final costs. Uh -huh. And he goes, sorry it took me so long to get back to you. I have a big hole in the side of my house. He's putting an addition on his house, which is the first fucking red flag. Big red flag. So then he goes, so it's going to be six grand plus you got to pay the crew their hourly rate wage. You got to pay their meals. You have to pay for their parking and you have to pay for the tape in the camera. So I'm like, dude, that's kind of encompasses everything you need for a video shoot. So what, what is that first six grand for? Other than for the addition on your house, yeah. you asshole. Yeah, you got to pay six grand for the shoot, and then you have to pay for everything for the shoot. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but, okay. So how much well, was it going to cost you? I, I don't even know at the end of that. It was so vague. That sounds how, very expensive. Yeah, that's all of a sudden. It's, it's like, dude, I'm not Scorsese here. It's a two-camera shoot. It's, dude, the parking would cost a fortune. All you got to do is set the camera up. Yeah. It's not like I'm... I'm Doing cartwheels and running yeah. into the crowd. It's Mick oh, Jagger on one of those big stages, running side to side. Some slow close-ups and stuff. Get a little dramatic with your I know. Uh, <laughs> your act. How many cameras? <laughs> two. It was going to be a two-camera shoot. Two I, cameras. And I said no crowd shots because I hate when the you know you hear, <laughs> the crowd's laughing. Here, let me show it to you. You know. So I was just like, you know, and I was just basic. This isn't even. It's not even going to be edited. Then I had to take it after that. I had to bring it and find someone here to edit it. You just get the raw tape. Good. The raw uh, tape, yeah. Somebody else edits it, and they don't do that for free. And they probably have a hole in the side of their house. Yeah, so then he sends me back this real, I'm sorry if I misrepresented what the yeah. price. Well, um, the editing will cost uh, $3,000, but yeah. you do have to pay for the editing machine, the editor's time, yeah. his car payment for that month, <laughs> and, and the editing. Food, and the editing. And the razor blades. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> the old school. A little old school there. <laughs> so uh, did you, did you uh, cancel? Did yeah, you I, said, I said, yeah, forget You're it. You're damn straight, bad. he did. That's too bad. I think the world needs a Bill Burr DVD. I'll, uh, I'm thinking maybe now, maybe I'll do it when I'm down in, uh, DC at the improv. Yeah. All right. You know, the, um, uh, phones have video now, like, uh, video phones. Just oh, is get that few, right? Get a few fans. You get, like, a 20 camera shoot from people in the front row. Uh -huh. You edit all that together every and, and 15 me, second snippet. That let they, me ask you this. How much yeah. is that going to cost me? But you got to buy all the phones, so okay. it's like a couple of hundred bucks a clip. No, the initial. The initial is going to cost you five. The initial is going to be five plus. grand. Plus, you got to. Uh, well, the people got to eat when they're at the comedy club. You got to buy phone chargers. You got to buy a month of their phone uh, bill. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just get the raw video. Yeah. Off of their phone from their websites. Then you got to download. So we're, we're going to start with five grand, and, we'll, and then I'll bill you in the end. I'll let you know yeah. what it is. Very expensive. That should have been a movie right there. And then you smash cut to the contractor. Yeah, it's going to be another three weeks. You want ceiling fans? Oh, okay. <laughs> it just <laughs> keeps going. It's just adding to the, <laughs> the contractor's daughter's got to go to college. Yeah. <laughs> just goes back where where somehow you're paying for a probe that's going to Mars <laughs> in the long run. Just My, this chain this chain of events. You're not lying. My brother's dealing with that with the restaurant. Oh, really? The contractors are just killing us. Yeah. It was supposed to be one thing, and now it's another thing. and Always another this, thing. Then they're adding this on, and oh, no, that was b for just this part of the job. Oh, and they leave it totally open-ended. It's like, here's the, the initial cock-in-your-ass price. Right. <laughs> and then we'll let you know if there'll be any hair-pulling yeah. or eye gouging then you have no, afterwards. Then you have no choice because the job's half done. Yeah, and like, well... Unless you give uh, such and such, we can't finish the job. Yeah. And you can't, uh, and you can't fire that walk. guy because then you got to yeah. fire another contractor. It's like, you're fucked. Mm -hmm. Restaurant opening in about a week, though. <clears throat> about a week. I want to be at the grand opening. Yes. You'll be I want there. a sample. You'll be there. A little Some restaurant good. in Huntington, Long Island. Cuisine. Called F.H. Riley's. Right in Huntington? Right in Huntington, yeah. Uh. Might not be able to go. <laughs> <laughs> How much of a goof would that be? Hey, this is a new fucking place. Why don't I come in here and see what the food's fucking like? Hey, asshole, what the fuck are you doing here? Hey, yeah. here's a bar I haven't been kicked out of here. Oh, oh, oh. Great. Does it have a bar? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Now, long before her picture's up behind it, <laughs> this person is not to be served. Here's some good Bam. news. I found a bar I haven't been kicked out of yet. <laughs> I like the side of tab. Fucking pictures up in the bars like Dillinger was in the post office. It's just, do not serve this person. So, uh, F.H. Riley's in Huntington. Yeah, stop by and say hi to my brother. He's working his ass off. Uh, Your fucking brother. <laughs> oh, yeah. Please. 
Have fun. Please have fun. Uh, no, I will absolutely be there. Yeah, I'll, I'll have details in the coming days, but uh, getting very close. All right, we got the XM Satellite Radio ads. These are great. This is yeah. why we're brilliant broadcasters. We see the future. We saw the future many years ago before we, mm -hmm. we fucked up on commercial radio. I see flying cars in Mylar suits in the next 10 years. Everybody's going to be wearing Mylar suits. We will have flying cars. Have we got this right? Yeah, we certainly yeah. did get this right. We can predict the future now. So just to give you the setup, um, well. uh, before we became the pioneers of satellite radio, Anthony and I were doing the old commercial radio thing. Way back when. Barely remember what that was like. We were very successful, syndicated across America in some fine markets. And then we blew it up. As, Might have heard of a little town know. called Boston. That's right. Oh, Might have heard of a right. little little hamlet of Philadelphia. Let's not forget Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> Can't we, please? <laughs> we had some and, of course, uh, New York City, the crossroads of the world. Perhaps. How about Vegas? How about Vegas? Philly, D.C., mm -hmm. Dallas, San Francisco, Seattle. How about a chilly little place called Buffalo, New York? Buffalo and Rochester, New York. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you have it. Just a few of the markets. That was everyone. How about uh, New Orleans? New Orleans, that's right. Cleveland. Chicago. Chicago. Dallas, Texas. I said Dallas already. I like to say Dallas, so I okay. said it again. All right. <laughs> Sacramento, California. Sacramento. Anyway, so uh, we're doing uh, quite well, and everybody wanted to advertise on our show, mm -hmm. even XM Satellite Radio. They knew. They knew. They knew the demo we held, the power we held with it. They knew who they wanted. And Initially, right, when the satellite started up, and right off the bat, this goes back easily three years. Right off the bat, we're like, "This is the this is the future of radio. It's it's growing by leaps and bounds. This is uh, definitely competition. We have to look at it as competition right off the bat." What did you seriously? What did you honestly think when you first heard like satellite radio? You can say whatever the hell you want. What you thinking somewhere? I want to be on that. Uh, absolutely, but at the time, we first of all we were in a contract. Second of all. We were doing uh, really well. We were doing terrestrial. really well, and satellite radio was still kind of just growing, you know? They only had, uh, at this point, they only had uh, a few hundred thousand listeners. Probably, yeah. Probably uh, less than a million. Le yeah, it had to be less than a million. Yeah. Three, uh, three, three, I don't even know. Over three, dude. We were off for two fucking years. So this is over three, maybe three and a half, four, four years, years ago. ago. <laughs> uh, I'm sure they, they had under a million listeners and uh, uh, subscribers. And, you know, to, to go over there, it was almost, everyone was equating it to, like, e Yada, that online radio, where, you know, 50 people at a time could listen, and then it started clipping, uh, <laughs> and, and people on it were, like, approaching us and going, dude, it's the future, is this internet radio? And I'm like, you know, no, it's not. No, I can't get my no, computer on the dashboard, so, uh, Can't no, get it not. in the car, especially at that point, yeah, uh, you couldn't do that. Uh, so no, it wasn't. We weren't considering it. Right. Timing, timing wise, it worked out perfectly. What's interesting about this? This goes back, like I said, three to four years ago, and guys on regular radio today are still denying that satellite radio is going to be anything. Yep. It's dummies. A bunch of dummies out there. So uh, we did not feel good about taking the XM satellite radio ads as we're doing our commercial radio show. We let it be known. And we let it be known, and they're like, just shut up and play the commercials. Right, and one day we just we had it, we absolutely had it. So the commercials playing for XM Satellite Radio, and they're the commercials are saying how great XM is, and I just turned on the mics and said, "Fuck this." Pollution of sound. One hundred so, digital channels of music. The competition news, is now advertising on our show, coast Anthony. Coast. So whether you're into hip hop <laughs> we or bebop, have sales force that work in this rock building. Rock stars or stock cars. You'll hear more, know this more, is the and go deeper than you ever did before. What I'm hooked on right is now is uh, blues a wide variety of things I've never heard before. I could drive all the way to New York and never have to change the channel. Uh, it's easy to add XM to any existing car stereo. Turn off the old Anthony Show code. Satellite radio is here. Visit your local electronic store for a demonstration. Learn more at xmradio.com. It is absolutely fabulous. Beyond AM, this is beyond the competition. FM, wake up! up to the power of X. Price may vary by model and retailer. Some models require additional installation fee. Antenna and subscription also require. Douchebag! What are you doing this New Year's Eve? Isn't that amazing? <laughs> oh, he's just yelling like a maniac right over the commercial. Isn't that amazing, though? That wasn't a recording, by the way, of the commercial playing and then Opie off air ranting about oh, it. Oh, no, that was That is how it aired. <laughs> That's how their fine commercial <laughs> air, aired. XM should get their money back for that one. They, they no did when they uh, signed us. Just please. letting the Trojan horse come rolling oh, in. Oh, yeah. God. Hey, this is a pretty horse for them yeah. to leave for us. 
<laughs> just to, to put it in perspective, that would be like off. that would be like us running ads for Howard for the other satellite radio company. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, taking their money and going. Same thing. Well, it's money, it's revenue. Who cares? It's the competition. And that's what their uh, the party line was over at Infinity was. Hey, they're paying for it. We'll air their commercials. They saw it as no threat. They saw it that no, they had no vision that this was going to do anything. Yeah. And they just saw it as, hey, take their money. Oh, so short sighted. You got to be cutthroat. Well, cutthroat. Fuck you. Right? It gets, Advertise on the internet. It gets better. So then when we were done with our 15 minutes of commercials, <laughs> we finally got to go yeah. back to our regular show. And this is how we uh, got back into it. We're back with the Opie and Anthony show. Oi! And it's official. We have a bunch of whores that work uh, for this company. That's for sure. Holy ass. Uh, we're running a spot on the Opie and Anthony show for satellite radio. Yeah, satellite radio. You know, it's the new uh And no one has a new problem range. with this in this company? That's called the competition. Right. And they're advertising... During our show, telling people basically that uh, they have another option out there. That all over, like, uh, no matter where you drive, you won't lose the signal. They're talking about all this great stuff <laughs> that uh, you don't get uh, by listening to the very station <laughs> that's advertising it. Who is it? Who, who uh, gave the okay to take that? <laughs> Bunch of whores. <laughs> Hard enough to compete in this day and age in radio, and now... Now they're just going to run spots for the competition on our show. And they have no problem with this whatsoever. So there you go. Just so you're not confused, that's us, you know, four years ago about uh, on regular radio, just losing our minds because uh, they're running XM spots during our show. And uh, it was so obvious that people were starting to get excited about satellite radio. It was something that, as we were listening to it, You'd say to yourself, wow, that, that does sound cool. You get all kinds of formats of music. You could drive coast to coast and not have to change the station once if you don't want to. Right. You, It's not regulated by the FCC. Right. This is fan-fucking-tastic. And this proves we're uh, brilliant broadcasters because now three, four years uh, later... You know, regular radio is in deep trouble. In deep trouble, and uh, they could have controlled it a little bit if they yeah. the, if they were smart enough to see what was coming four years yep. ago. They but, still advertise, though, right? They still allow them to advertise. Uh, no, uh, finally they've turned the corner. Most of these radio companies, and they will not accept uh, spots for satellite radio. Finally, wow. It, it continues. They, they're making spots uh, against satellite now radio now. Exactly. Now the same stations that were airing. Uh, hey, this uh, satellite radio is great. Come on over. We'd love to have you. Are now going, hey, hey why pay for minute. radio? Now they're all, why pay for fucking radio, man? You don't want to pay for well, it. Well, we got the uh, the famous one. We got a we got like ten of them, but here's the one we really like. Here's some of the same stations so now that this we're is, running the commercials you just heard. Right, now this is today, what they're doing on regular radio. In music news, you'll never believe who was arrested on stage last night for performing a lewd act. It was so outrageous, we can't even describe it on the radio. You might expect this behavior from heavy metal or rap stars, but this time, the guilty party is none other than the easy listening sensation... Please deposit 25 cents for the next three minutes. Radio, you shouldn't have to pay for it. This message brought to you by America's 13,000 local radio stations who believe some things were just meant to be free. A bit hypocritical, isn't it? Um, <laughs> don't pay no attention to those commercials we aired three or four years ago. We really didn't mean it. We were just in for the cash. That's right. I bought a I, boat from that money. So outrageous, we can't even tell you on the radio. Yeah, they're still oh, not getting it right. But they can yeah. on the satellite, by the way. Yeah. You know how she was saying it in the, the, the old XM commercial right yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So then uh, going back, here's us on commercial radio. Really pissed off because uh, we have XM commercials on our show. Um, we discuss it more here. Is it? Is they it bought something... our show because we have a huge audience, okay? Yeah. And the commercial is basically telling everyone that you don't need to you know, listen to Opie and Anthony. Uh, there's other choices out there. Why don't they just run a commercial with every other uh, show that is on you know, against us? Yeah. And then have the listeners decide, well, I'm going to try out a couple of these shows. <laughs> I got an idea. Here's what he's going to say. Oh, they're not going to do well. It's just like that click radio and the e yada and all the uh, internet radio thing that failed. So we'll take a little bit of their money. Uh, and it'll just fail anyway. 
But the thing is, it's not like internet radio. It's going to be installed in cars and stuff. Oh, that HBO, it'll never catch on. That'll never catch on. It's silly. People paying for TV, it'll never happen. If man were meant to fly, he'd have wings. <laughs> that is a huge insult, man. I hope they're getting a lot of money to whore themselves out like that. Man can't ride on trains. Don't you know if a human being exceeds 30 miles an hour, he will surely perish. <laughs> you know, they used to think that. That's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. It really is. So there you go. We're back here. Wow. On XM. It's pretty impressive. Kind of taking a look at the old days four years ago when they uh, accepted we XM saw. spots on our, our very successful we uh, commercial radio show. We saw. We had the vision. We knew that this was going to be successful. We always have the vision. We know where the <laughs> next brilliant step brilliant broadcasters. Is. People just don't yes. realize that yet. And that's, yes. that's our frustration every day. <laughs> Finally, I had it. Um, you're going to hear a curse. And you're listening to satellite radio, so like whatever, a curse. Just remember... Going back about three or four years, this is on commercial radio, but I was just losing my mind. I could, I just couldn't understand why they would do this to us. <laughs> Radio's really the best All right. part. Yeah, I guess not the tape. The best part, there's good old Ben Sparks in the background laughing like an idiot. Years ago, cackling Ben included. Just, in, just in case you thought this was the new Ben on, on XM, no, he's been laughing like an idiot for many years for us. <laughs> many years. <laughs> Radio's really, it's really getting pathetic. It, it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> this used to be a business where every radio station was for themselves, and they just fought, literally fought on the street. It, I, we used to get in fights because someone else's van was parked outside the venue for a yeah. concert. Now all the stations are owned by the same person or the same company, and they don't want you talking bad about this station or that station because you're going to hurt the company. It's making radio so bland and boring. Yeah. And now on top of that, they don't mind taking taking advertising dollars from the competition. Right. They, they see no problem with this. <laughs> Holy shit. They don't see a problem with this? Will there be cursing over this uh, satellite radio? Because I want to gig I'm, over I'm there. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I want to gig over there. Uh, the, you know. It's not um, regulated. And here we are back uh, on XM. Look at that. I want a gig over there. Cursing on uh, asking you shall radio. receive. Should hand that tape into the FCC. We got away with one back then. Whoa. Someone is requesting, let me go to Pete. I haven't heard this stuff in a long time. Pete yeah. in Rhode Island. Pete? Yes. Hey. Yeah, I was wondering if you guys could play the clip where you get your uh, bigger boss on the phone and he's like, oh, don't worry about XM. No, they're nothing. They're nothing. Oh, Ken Stevens. I think that's the next clip we got here. Oh, excellent. All right. Thank you, Pete. Thanks. I don't remember uh, how this went down, but then we just would not go on with our show. We were, you know, we were obsessed with this whole, you know, playing XM commercials on our commercial radio show. And finally, you know, uh, we got Ken Stevens, our general manager, on the phone. What a set of balls when you have uh, the ratings that we had oh, I know. over there. Because you could just do anything except have a couple fucking church. But uh, besides <laughs> that, I mean, anything. Right. But yeah, we're cursing. Yeah. I don't think we got in trouble for that. So we got Ken Stevens. He was the guy running the station at the time. He was one of our uh, really good friends over there. Yeah, we like Ken. That's uh, stuck up for us on many occasions with that whole stupid Howard battle. But here's Ken uh, explaining the uh, XM ads to us. So the question is, somebody said to me, you're wondering why we're taking these XM uh, satellite ads? Very good. You actually understood the question also, Ken Stevens. Yes. Why are we advertising for satellite for radio? An option to listening to this very program. Pretend for a minute that you don't know anything about the radio business oh, and you're just gosh. the average guy oh, wow. listening in your car uh -huh. to those XM radio spots. Okay. Uh -huh. Do they make any sense to you? Hold on, let me oh, let me here let me go. put myself in there. Here we go. You, you asked us for a lot, and you're not giving us time. Sorry. Hold on, hold Sorry. on. Okay, I'm sitting. Opie, sit. So you're oh, saying advertising doesn't work, and no one should advertise on radio? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's your show. No. Holy! He's also you know, basically talking down to the listeners. Right? Too. They're a bunch of morons. They don't understand words don't like understand. satellite. It's something up in space, and yeah. they don't know that. So you got to be a rocket scientist to know about satellites. 
Jesus Christ, Meanwhile, Ken. Meanwhile, the ad completely explains it. Yeah, completely. And they had completely. everyday Joes going, I can get in my car and drive all the way across the country. They you want to hear ABCs any C's of satellite radio. You want to hear any format you want from coast to coast without changing the dial? Satellite radio. All right. Wait, you got you to slow that down, man. I'm, wait, I'm, wait, wait. I'm just the average everyday guy. I, I, can't, I can't take in words that quick. I didn't understand what you meant by format of music. Fuck, I should have taped the show. Yeah. Then I could rewind it. Oh, is that a poor, poor argument? He oh, is. Uh, I, I nailed him so bad. Oh, uh, like, so yeah, yeah. Doesn't so advertising work. doesn't work. Oh, oh, oh no, oh, no, oh, it's right. just fine. Keep it coming. Going back to the tape. I know I'm saying this a million times, but there are dummies out there. This is us on commercial radio discussing why are we playing XM commercials. It's your show. No, <laughs> I think that uh, if you listen to the commercials the way we're running them, yeah, they're, they're not awfully attractive. Did you anybody. hear? Okay, did you hear the one? How line? many of your friends are going to go out and spend whatever? What does it say? On on on. Now insert color TV here. Insert radio here. Insert car here. Where he is going to say are going to buy this right now? I don't know. Insert Xbox instead of PlayStation. Right. Insert any new technology. Ken, did you hear the one part in that commercial where he says, uh, boy, I could drive through New York and I don't have to change the station? The no, I, I heard the one where he said, and my favorite is the Blues Channel. Right. Right. Where he can I'm not really to... worried about losing a whole lot of audience to the Blues Channel. Oh, well, well, not, Ken. Huh? <laughs> wow, you when guys. when those ratings come out and they're down... Who will be getting yelled at? Hey, you know what? If your ratings are down and your audience has moved over to satellite radio, I'll stop taking those commercials. It's a, yeah, but it's a little here, a little there. It adds up after a while. Absolutely. Good. Wow. I'm here on XM. I don't think I've ever seen you guys so 100% in the right. This Isn't it nothing. so cool? that it, it is almost like me and Opie went into a DeLorean. We reached 88 miles oh, an hour, exactly. went to the future, <laughs> came back and just shoved it in Ken's face. We have seen it. And you know how many people did come and over? Every, to everything everybody. he said, like, well, you know, little by little, <laughs> little it by little, to add up. it adds up. The programming. Oh, it's the blues. Ch yeah, well, some people want to hear that. There's Plus, what, what I also love is you guys would get in trouble for, for shitting on the, the people who advertise, and that's exactly what he's doing here. Going, yeah. Hey, if you listen to those ads, those ads stink. They don't even make right, sense. Right. They don't even yeah. make sense. I didn't understand a word. Bill, it's cold. And their product stinks. I wouldn't listen to the Blues right. channel. I don't think we're going to. If your ratings go down because of satellite, I'll stop taking the ads. Bill, it's called chipping away. Chipping away. Ting, 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 ting. We're big fans of chipping away. Chip, 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 chip. You know, he had to take the call from the guy who's paying for the ads yeah. for XM right after that. Then he go, okay, wait a second. Uh, I, I want you to just imagine that you don't know anything about advertising. Yeah. <laughs> He's, He's always ready. wanting us to imagine something. Yeah. Picture, if you will. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> a world in which. Right. No, we people love... who speak English do not understand it. We love the chipping away concept. We've been chipping away at Howard's credibility for years and his hypocrisies. Satellite radio. It's, uh, uh, bah. it's not going to go bah. anywhere. They barely got up that Sputnik thing. Right. You think they're going to be able to get a satellite up there that plays music? It continues. We, we ended up giving these guys a, like a 20 to 30 minute commercial that day. We helped them You're going to leave cars at the airport and rent them and people are going to... That'll never fly. People want to have the comfort of their own vehicle. Right. <laughs> They'll have a relative who could pick them up. <laughs> Craziness. I'm not going to want that. Why would people want a turbine jet engine when they are propeller is perfectly fine on these aircraft? You get cross country <laughs> They're too in a noisy day. noisy and people are not going to like them. Why would you want a propeller? gives people a comfort factor. They see Who it would want to go to the bathroom in their own house? <laughs> <laughs> when a perfectly good outhouse is right outside, keeping the stink and stench out of doors. Fertilizing your backyard. Why would you want a direct flight to Vegas when you could go all the way to L.A. <laughs> and then go to Vegas after having one of your tickets canceled? People like seeing different cities, even ones right. that they don't want to go to. Why would you want to fly into the airport that has your car? That's just plain stupid. That is ridiculous. When you could fly to another airport it's and then still an airport. drive from that airport to the airport where your oh, car is I at. I want you to imagine for a second you know nothing about travel. Right. Imagine you're <laughs> sitting on a plane that's going where you don't want to go. That's right. And you're just Oh, you don't excited. have to imagine. That, you were there. <laughs> that's why... <laughs> That's why, Don, I'm so tough, because I'm sick of working with dummies. Whew. Wow. That's why. Jiminy Cricket. Went for big air on that one. Dummies. 
Like so lots of foul lots language of dummies. We're really. proving that we're brilliant broadcasters right here and now. We have the vision. We can see into the future. Just trust us. That was let pretty us do damn our thing. I got, I got to give you that. That was very like. We got wow. more. We got more. Because then there's a question here. Could ONA go to satellite? <laughs> oh, Jesus. So going back in time, we're doing our commercial radio show discussing why they're playing XM commercials on our show. And do you know that uh, it's going to be an option on all new model uh, cars? Let me ask you something. By the way, we uh, we also did our research. Right. We study this fucking business. We know our enemies. We pay attention. So when someone is saying, uh, well, the, uh, you're going to be running XM commercials, we're, we're not going to sit there like uh, every other dumb jock in America and go, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> we actually did our research and, and found out as much info as possible. And Anthony is like, you know, this whole uh, yeah. going to be an option in new cars. That's, that's what frightened me the most is I could see something if you have if if you had to take all kinds of wires and gadgets and gizmos that it was never really going to take off uh, uh, anywhere past just the geek or tech guy or something like that. But when I heard that these things were going to be factory installed with your AM, FM radio, satellite radio available right there, just like AM and FM, I was like, oh, boy, now there's trouble. But I love the bravado of this. He starts every like answer with like, this little John Wayne. Oh, yeah. oh that was that was how Ken operated. Let me tell you something. We boy. love him. And Ken wasn't just any uh, general manager. He was one of the big wigs. Yeah. He was one of the most powerful uh, general managers in Infinity Broadcasting. Uh, here we go again. And do you know that uh, it's going to be an option on all new model uh, cars? Let me ask you something. Yeah. <laughs> you got the, that that newfangled cable or satellite in your house? You need money this bad, right? Kate? With, with all you want us to give some of the money back? There, yeah, I got. Including I think, the blues channel. I think it's great. As a matter of fact, and if you look at um, broadcast TV, uh, the ratings are down pretty pretty low because of uh, cable. Uh, answer my question. Yeah, I do. You you you, you uh, did so when you're sort of walking around the house instead of turning on the radio, you turn on. Channel 956 and listen to the uh, well, there's enough, the, the Blues Channel or I, the Kids I, Channel. or I believe there's enough people that do it that chip away. There's there's um, my TV and there's my radio, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not watching TV in my car. Why assume all this, Ken? Do we need the money that bad? Yeah. Hey, why we're, we're why in we just, the... Uh... Why don't we just list all the shows that are on opposite us? Because that's what you just did. You're killing <laughs> us. I, you know, I took out the one where XM... Wanted to run the spot that said you were boring. I, I didn't run that one. Really? Yeah, no, I stuck to the one that said and the company, Blues Channel. <clears throat> the company has no problem with this? I guess not. Must have been a big buy. <laughs> it <laughs> must have been here. It wasn't a, it wasn't a distant <laughs> Well, they, they race, probably sure. will now that you've... Uh, you made an issue out of it. Uh oh, it was supposed to be under the radar. Oh yeah, that's because our listeners are stupid. And this uh, thing is something that's uh, Ken has dubbed newfangled. <laughs> newfangled. So I don't think uh, it'll take off. I don't think you guys were paying attention, but that's okay. <laughs> oh god. All right, Ken. Well, that, thank that, you. For, that wasn't what I said. Thank you for clearing that up for us. I mean, if you're really certain that. Uh, you're losing listeners to that, to that blues channel on satellite radio. I, I'll stop taking the commercials. <laughs> That's all he had was he that reference. He just didn't. The blues channel. He did not see the freight train barreling down, man. Do you think, you think he's just holding the company line or he really believed that? Uh, I, I think know. he really believed it. I think they all, I, I think they all did. All the heads, you know. And this went right up to Mel Karmazin, well, who had the same ideology, who was, you know... No ad for a, a, a competing form of entertainment would be taken if the word wasn't handed down by Mel. So he didn't see it either. And now he's the head of uh, the doggy company. So he uh, obviously changed his tune. Exactly. Well, we have one more clip here. It's uh, quick. Going back again. This is like four years ago. There was a day when um, sales didn't uh, control radio, Anthony. It now controls it. I remember yeah. a time that they f would fight with the competition, but now they welcome the business of the competition <laughs> on their airwaves. Let's see. Hundreds of distortion-free channels that travel with you being offered in high-end cars driven by decision makers. Ken's right. It'll never catch on. You know, guys, I'll be doing a gig tonight. But, you know, I don't want to talk about it. Let's plug Rich Boss. <laughs> I, be I wonder if at some point they'll make deals with people like us to carry our show if people want that as an alternative no matter where they drive but then 
It, it says, okay, uh, what about if you're driving through an area w- that we're on at a regular radio station and you can get it on satellite? Where's the revenue coming from? It just throws a Fo- whole bunch of Following things. the logic of this, I'm just assuming that this great company of ours is buying satellite radio. <laughs> well, you know, something. And they're jumping the gun. It makes sense. But Work, you know what? Get it up there they're and probably buy not it. buying satellite radio. No? But instead, they're running ads for the competition. And no one sees anything wrong with that. Uh, Joe, what's going on? Yo, guys, what's happening? Hey. hey, listen, I just wanted to know, can you repeat everything? You said I lost the signal, man. <laughs> <laughs> classic, you dick. Very good. And there you have it. We're back live here on XM. <laughs> Isn't that just amazing? Visionaries. Oh. Visionaries, yes. Yes. We just don't say we're brilliant broadcasters. We show it to if you. If that was like a made-for-TV movie, I'd be like, ah, that's, you know, one person. <laughs> so far-fetched. Yeah, like. There's no one's ever that wrong. <laughs> like whenever they do the uh, the made for TV movies, it's always like, let me tell you something, Terry Bradshaw, you're <laughs> never gonna be a quarterback, and you certainly will not win any championships. <laughs> and then you're like, no one, ha- no one ever fucking said that. That is just over dramatizing yep. of this to sell this show, and that's literally what ha- what went down. You exactly have it what happened. Yeah. Ken swaggering. Eh, don't you worry about Ugh. that, boys. The Blues Channel. The Blue. Oh yeah. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, when you go home, and he's trying to, he's trying to relate the two things: being at home and those upper channels where the music uh, channels are. Yeah. You know, you hit there, you get to listen to seventies, eighties, all kinds of music on your TV or your radio. It's it, it is different. I don't listen to those channels on my television. But I, I do. have a radio at home, and I, I listen to satellite radio. Yeah, I listen to those channels on on the TV now. I've done that because that, people are starting to chip away at that too, and realize, oh wow, I just got to go up here and I can get all the, all these uh, music channels. But I have XM right there in my living room. Right. Well, so and if I you got the that. Direct TV, you got the XM channels right yeah. there. So on your TV. Oh boy, was Ken so wrong? And a lot of people. I see nothing with the um, sex for Sam thing, guys. You go right ahead with it. Three years running. Maybe we should have had someone else in charge. And a lot of people uh, want to know where Ken Stevens is today. He's uh, on a boat. He's sailing the Chesapeake Bay. He just sails day in and day out. That's it. That's what he does now. He, uh, He's he enjoying a, his retirement, his yeah, early retirement. A golden umbrella, his early <laughs> retirement that we gave him on a gold platter. <laughs> And now he's got a golden parachute. <laughs> Time to cash in the stock option. Yep. <laughs> Time to go sailing. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah. What do you think he's investing his money in? Satellite, Satellite radio. radio. Yeah. I would guarantee it's he's got portfolio. shares of one company or the other. Yeah. There is satellite radio. In ev- I would guarantee every single radio executive has shares of either XM or Sirius or Bull. Every single one of them. They bash it. They don't believe in it. They make ads saying, don't don't uh, listen to it. Don't buy it. And I believe it most of be them. It should be free. And they buy, buy, buy the stock. And I believe most of them are listening to satellite radio, too. Yeah. Secretly sending, faxing their resumes over. Oh, of course. Under Why? Uh, assumed names. You know they make good blind good boxes, salaries. they're called. <laughs> they make good salaries, these guys. So they uh, probably have newer vehicles where they're factory installs of satellite radio. Do you honestly believe they are trolling through all of those fucking commercials that they can't stand, or they're listening to satellite, listening to the music they want to hear, or mm-hmm. the talk they want to hear? Mm-hmm. They're such hypocrites. So uh, fast forward to the present. Now we got a, a hold of some of the free radio ads by celebrities. Now they're getting the celebrities on board. At See, first it was just monotone guys saying, "Well, just to follow." At first free. they accepted all the satellite radio ads, and now satellite radio has become something. Now they're like, "Oh fuck, we got to make anti-satellite radio ads, <laughs> dummies." <laughs> it really is funny when you look at the whole big picture. They could have taken out a couple steps there, you know, just ignore. The key is to just ignore it. That's what they should have done is just completely ignore salary. Yes. Yeah. But they actually helped this business grow. They certainly did. Thank you. They probably uh, sped it along. Uh, who knows? Maybe six to eight months. You know? It probably grew that much faster yeah. because of what uh, commercial radio was. That's like being on first. stage at, like, Caroline's, and then behind you, they have a banner for some other club right yeah. down the street. Another club that's convenient right there, better. Yeah, <laughs> where the comedians are uncensored. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you can go see whatever comedian you want to you want to hear. Right. 
Yeah, you just and walk in between in. my act, it would just stop, and there would just be I don't yeah. know some sort of intermission. Yeah, it's like saying the the waitresses are hotter, showing more cleavage. There's more booze in your drinks. If you're lucky, oh, you get two for one. You know. All right, here's uh, Bon Jovi talking about free radio. Before we saw a million faces and rocked them all. Before we could sell out Giant Stadium, Moscow's Lenin Stadium, or London's Wembley Stadium. Before we could close down Times Square just to play for a half a million people. Before my band became a household name. Before we sold more than 100 million albums. You heard Bon Jovi on the radio. Radio. You hear it here first. That's yeah. because when they made it, there was no satellite radio, you fucking idiot. Is that a good thing? I don't know what that means. It doesn't mean anything. I don't know what that means. They're, they're just so stupid in commercial radio. What does that mean? Before we discovered a gold rush in California, we rode a Conestoga wagon across the country. <laughs> yeah. And what are they there's trying planes to, now. What are they trying to accomplish with these ads? What They're does making it, mean? it seem like Bon Jovi had the option. Do you want to be right. on free radio or sat sat satellite radio didn't exist no. during the slippery when wet days right. of 1986, maybe? And and here, just because, uh, you know, everywhere you look, there's hypocrisy. Derek hit it. Hi, this is John Bon Jovi, and I'm proud to be one of the five million subscribers to the XM Nation. <laughs> Wait a minute. Come on, John. What is it? <laughs> Make a stand, man. John. <laughs> we love John Bon Jovi. Make a stand. What is he? <laughs> John. What? We... What is it, man? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is. He is completely on both ends of the spectrum on that one. <sighs> You have to and be. I'm proud. But you know what you have to be as the artist? Anything. You just, wherever they're playing yeah, your shit, playing, man. Right. Wherever they are playing your shit, you got to smooch that ass. I've never gotten involved in feuds between different comedy clubs. Like, if you play this club, you play that. No. Yeah. Right. That's your fight. Um, yeah. <laughs> just lick it. <laughs> lick the ass. There's the XM ass and the free radio ass. <laughs> lick them both. You know, we love going off on tangents here. So Howard's on Larry King talking about hypocrisy. Hoo, 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 hoo. And he has this to say about Bubba. Love me, Daddy. Bubba the love sponge. All right. I'm really not interested in radio, although what's interesting now that I have these channels, yeah. I have to listen to talent around the country because we're going to bring some people in. There's a guy starting on my channel called Bubba the Love Sponge. He was thrown off of Clear Channel. Uh, because he was thrown off Clear Channel, I first became attracted to the idea of hiring him. And he's got a funny show, a very different sensibility than mine. He's got more of a redneck kind of show. And those guys get down and dirty. And All right, that was Howard about a week ago, right? Or a few All days ago? right. This is uh, Howard talking about Bubba less than a year ago. Less than a year. Why don't they have an award for most jealous and give it to those two guys? <laughs> <laughs> Bubba Sponge and uh, the other guy. Too many candidates. Moby the Sponge. Moby Dick. Moby Dick. Moby Dick. Well, the crowd started booing. Now, the they should just name themselves Howard Stern. They why should. why do they come fun. up with And the only thing that they do on their own is give themselves a name, and it's always a bad name. <laughs> It's always a bad. It's a Bubba the Love Sponge. You know what kind of? What, well, I don't want to be in an industry with a Bubba the Love Sponge. Oops. I don't want to go to an award show with a Bubba the Love Sponge. I don't want to be in the same room with Bubba the Love Sponge. Isn't that just Oops. wonderful? But what happened to? He's a different guy with different Jesus sensibilities, Christ. and you found him, and then we're attracted to him because of what? You know. I'm completely leaving. different than me. You you guys are killing people today. I'm leaving the oh, fucking fuck yeah. business. We are slaying yes. today. Yeah, we're slaying. I could give a fuck if everyone turned this off today. I am enjoying the shit out of listening to this <laughs> it's hypocrisy. It's thing just to say he's a hypocrite. Right, or right. Someone's a hypocrite. When you have fucking audio it's of somebody audio. actually doing it. Oh, Dude, my that God. that is so... There is no way to explain that away. You can't say, well, what I meant, what... There's no way to explain away the fact that... You kissed Bubba's ass, said he's different from you, and he's you, funny. you enjoy, he's funny, puts on a funny, different, entertaining show, and then you were just saying, he sucks, he's a clone, he... Uh, chip, chip, chip. See? Holy See shit. See the chip, chip game? <laughs> right in front of your eyes. We just did I'm a little chip, trying to chip, roll chip. back some of the audio I've had on this chip, program. Chip, chip, Wow. Oh, we'll get it if you oh, come yeah. up looking like a hypocrite. <laughs> Fuck yeah, we're all about uh, exploiting this shit. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Also, uh, 
Also this. Actually, what I just said there will be part of the clip someday when you get it. Of course it, it will. I'm uh, waiting for the audio. Here it is, yeah, Bill. Yeah, we have it. Now that you're on the fucko list, Red. Here it is, fucko burr. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's September 06. <laughs> I got about nine months before that happens. Something will happen. Big story today in the newspaper. I opened up the pages and there was my beautiful daughter in the newspaper. Uh, my daughter Emily is my oldest daughter. She's 22 years old and she's a great kid. And she, uh, you know, went and uh, did a show. I was unaware of the show. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not. A, I haven't seen the show. Don't know too much about the show. Unaware because you're an absentee parent. <laughs> Love me, daddy. Love me, daddy. Not aware that your daughter was on stage showing her tits. That's I believe a great he's father. just. I believe he's just downplaying vag, dude. I couldn't take a leak without my parents uh, knowing about it. Yo, don't know too much about the show. And, uh, you know, evidently, uh, she had Liar. some falling out with the uh, director. And it's, you know, it's all rather unfortunate because she's a, you know, she's a great kid. And like so many people trying to get started in acting, from what she tells me, she put her faith in the director and the cast and a uh, wonderful cast, but uh, kind of made a deal with the director that he wouldn't use her picture for promotional purposes as, and would uh, single her out. They kind of had a verbal agreement. And uh, she felt very betrayed by this guy. That's bullshit. Like, yes. it wasn't going to get out that Howard's daughter was getting naked in a, of course. a dumb play. The audio's up on OpenAnthony.com, and we're looking for your remixes. We talked about that earlier in the program. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, by the way, we might have to beat some people up around here. Paul in Cleveland. Paul, what's up? What's up, fellas? Hey. Happy birthday, Billy. Um, I was part of the PR firm that uh, put together those those John Bon Jovi spots. Yeah, which the, ones? The one about radio. The, the one radio? about radio. And, and that was kind of more like an anti-MP3 player, you know, listen to the radio, not your iPod sort of thing. Mm. Uh, not not anti-satellite. Yeah, no, I, I don't see that, sir. I see any, any of these pro radio things are uh, anti-satellite. I didn't say it was good. I just said that was <laughs> the aim. Don't listen to your record player. When you can listen to the radio, right? Well, why would you waste time doing that? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's listen to another one. It's the Rolling Stones here. <clears throat> Come on. Before we played stadiums, before a little T and A, before we had drug busts, before all a guitar needed was five strings, oh. two fingers, and one asshole to play it. That's it's a lovely thing. You heard us, the Rolling Stones, on the radio. I guess I don't really know what they're for. Yeah, what are they for? I think it could be they're... for illegal downloading. I don't know. They're advertising radio? Yeah, they're advertising radio on the radio. All right, so they're advertising radio. They want your business. They want you to listen it's to a the... spot. It's a okay. commercial break. <laughs> so it's pretty much anti-satellite radio, anti-iPods, anti-MP3. Anti-anything. Illegal downloading. It's probably computer. They're losing so much business to everything. I think that's what they're trying to... Oh, no, they're not. Ask any one of them. Nothing has taken away listenership. All these forms of entertainment that have come about where you can download uh, no, they, uh, they have songs a... on your toaster now. And, and and that's not taken away from anything. But Anthony, they have such a great formula. They There's nothing I do. love more than listening to the 20 minutes, 30 minutes of commercials, mm -hmm. and then hearing a song that I just heard 40 minutes ago. Me and too. And if it could be something of the pop Me genre. Three. Me too. And that's or why maybe I stick with I it. I could hear Eric Clapton's Layla one more time. How ma You know something? You never get tired of it. It's just It just keeps getting better. Oh. Well, I'm sure Eric. Oh, oh, again. Clapton shuts it off. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does. That's a great point. He probably said, for the love of God, <laughs> enough already. This fucking song again. So boring. This is a great, uh, good call. <laughs> Bloody boy, I hated it when I fucking did it. Good phone call from Kevin. Kevin in Ohio, what's up? Hey, uh, what you guys are going through with this, this every industry goes through this exact same thing. I mean, every industry, when somebody new comes in, they, they ignore them and, or, they, or like you said, sometimes they'll even help them. And then when they become big, then they start bashing them and they start thinking, holy shit, now we're in trouble. Now what do we do? It, it, this is, there's so many examples of it. This is textbook, huh? Oh, it's, it's so classic. I mean, 
Uh, what I do is I work in uh, construction, and 50 years ago, there was no such thing as asphalt. I paper. bet you when that first Starbucks uh, uh, shop went up, mm-hmm. little local coffee guys like, ah, come on. Nothing yeah. but coffee. Coffee stuff. Uh, gonna, I got my regulars. They're not going to pay attention to that. Who's going to pay four bucks for a cup of joe? Right. right. Yeah. You know, that old chip it away thing. Ah, screw them. Dude. All right, boys. All right. Dude, dude, that guy's in uh, construction. Uh, new technologies in that. We used to have to nail up every board, uh, every uh, uh, drywall board with a hammer and a nail. And now you just beep, 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 beep. Who's the guy that's going, ah, that'll never take. I'd rather, sw- I'm going to die swinging this hammer. It's every industry has new technology. And remember- unless you pay attention, you're done. I remember when I came home one time, I bought new luggage that actually had wheels on it. And at that point, it was very few of me, and most of them were stewardesses. Yeah. So my, both my roommates were trashing me. Oh. Going, a real man carries his fucking bag. And so I'm like, <laughs> really? Just talking about that in the airport, like, sitting really? there, thinking, you know, years ago, people fucking held these things oh. and carried these huge things of Running luggage. from terminal, trying, yeah. to, trying to catch your uh, And it was everybody. Flight. I go, look around. Everyone is rolling their friggin' carry-on, and they roll their, their bags when they check them in. I go, but just years ago, man, people carried these big, hard-shelled fucking suitcase handles, heavy fucking thing. And now everyone's Remember, rolling. Yeah, you see people, they used to set them down, and you had to take a break. Yeah. That's yeah. why I was cracking up. I'm like, look, you, you fag. And I says, yeah. Fag it. You guys, yeah, the making wheel. it easier. That funny wheel, boy, that's yeah. never been convenient over history. Yeah. <laughs> Anything's better with a wheel on it. The wheel is Anything. Just, the wheel is just a fad. I don't care what you, you guys pick. just described uh, what I did <laughs> going to Vegas. <laughs> why? I don't have the wheels yet. <laughs> Are you insane? I, I had like two duffel bags. Dude, you're a crazy person. <laughs> no, I you're a crazy person. You're in a business. <laughs> where we travel everywhere, right? And you don't have the latest, nicest, no wheeled. Luggage. I was when I when it took me 16 hours to get to Vegas and 13 hours door to door to get home. I was carrying my bags. That's insanity. Y- now you're crazy. He, you, y- we play a goddamn thing where he's got the insight to see satellite radio as something that's going to be huge. When everyone was like, "What the fuck is that?" And he's still pulling around friggin' wheelless luggage. I'll admit I'm a brilliant broadcaster. I'm not brilliant in my everyday life. Dude, get <laughs> wheels. I need to get wheels. I just the only recently, people it's uh, like got you and like old people. Everyone's <laughs> trying to see old yeah. people. They still have like with the floral pattern like luggage, uh, floral <laughs> print. Uh, nothing beats that big hard shell green, like Samsonite. Uh, to match their pantsuit. Whoa. Yeah, well, you hear it come down off of the uh, the baggage thing, and it makes that bad <laughs> thud sound. Well, uh, the listeners just trying to get back on track here, so we uh, have the listeners sending in anti-free radio ads. And the first one, right off the bat, is two minutes and thirty seconds long. What is guys? Going on? What did we say when we said we wanted you to send these in? What did we say? I'm waiting for an answer. We said keep it short. Keep it short and the, to the point. The worst thing you could do with these things, worse than a short bad one, is a long good one. Yeah, we don't want to work too hard. So if, I got I it. I think. Was that right? If this, if this bit takes it. off, we don't have to work as hard. And already you guys exactly. are wrecking the bit. You're ruining the bit. Traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Eliza. This is Mr. Radio himself. Once brilliant, but will soon have to be eliminated. Field investigation finding obsolescence. You know why you're here? Uh, yeah, I'd say so, yeah. You've been under investigation for the mandatory period of one year and 11 months. You're found to be obsolete. Listen to you. You are so jealous. My show was revolutionary, groundbreaking. When I came on the scene, people were not doing a thing. You are obsolete. Hold it. Don't stop me. You have no function. I did a bit at NBC going back to 1980-something called the Bathroom Olympics. They'd say, hey... Let's see who can go to the bathroom, we'll time it. And we'll see who can go faster. My audience used to eat that stuff up. You're an anachronism, like a ghost from another time. You better calm down. You're a bug. Yeah. Ugly, misformed little creature who has no purpose here, no meaning. 
Papa. Yeah, make it brief. Spiritual, spiritual, sexual. Sit back in your chair. Papa, don't preach. Go ahead, baby. It's all yours. In my tits, my tits inside God. My tits are God, Lee. My tits are God. The state has proven that there is no God. That will be all. Um, well, I mean, I had a dream when I was, you know, like Martin Luther King, when I was five years old. You have nothing but spindly limbs and a dream, and the state has no use for your kind. Um, I'm learning to be better. You waste our time, and you're not worth the waste. How do you find, ladies and gentlemen? Obsolete. 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 You are obsolete. This is what is meant by paying the fiddler. This is the comeuppance awaiting every man when the ledger of his life is opened and examined. The tally made and then the reward or the penalty paid. This is judgment night. And the other one is... All right. I remember that episode. But it's not the anti-free uh, radio ads. Why was no. I bunched in with this? That's more of a... Yeah. That's like... It, that's like anti Howard, a Howard Stern daughter remix. Right, yeah. Like it's three it was covering all the bases there. Three or four different bits. I think there was a Pat O'Brien sex tape in it. I don't know. <laughs> all right. It wasn't badly done. No, it was, pretty it was good. a little long. Yeah. Let's say hi to Keith the cop. Hey, Keith, what's up? Hey, good morning. What's going on? Good morning. So, how would you actually put wheels on a gym bag? Yeah, Obi's decided he's just going to be like, um, the you're not channel. going on a trip. He's not going on a trip. He's just kind of dropping in somewhere for the night. You know, after he finally got there and I met him at the airport and I said, all right, let me get your bags for you. Well, what do they look like? So he says, well, they're kind of like duffel bag looking. And you see the bag come off the chute and like the zipper's open, a pair of pants are hanging out of the zip. <laughs> it's like, what? I just look at him and I go. Oh, very snazzy. Fancy luggage. Fancy luggage for a fancy. What's kept you from just getting one luggage bag? Uh, what's kept me from buying a house? What's I, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> wow, I'm a Do you mess. just like not like to shop? And, and I no, I I got I've upgraded my my stuff. But yeah, look at that sweater. Dude, this is my sick clothes. If you do that, that online, you could get luggage. I, I'll, I'll get bring it luggage. right to your house. Because then the night before, I have to think about every single thing I'm packing because I know my luggage is going to be too heavy to walk through the airport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're definitely not bringing any sort brain, of electronics. There's no laptop in your bag. No, it's just no. like, my brain is not wired when it comes to like the, this normal shit that people have figured out. I when, just, when, when it comes down to the baggage thing, you just hear... <laughs> Because <laughs> your deodorant is just <laughs> spraying into your clothes. <laughs> oh, I have more shampoo bottles that break. Just get broken. Out, yeah. Goopy I, clothes. I, I can't even out. tell you. All right. Well, thanks uh, for calling me out on that, Keith. No, man. You, oh, you got to you gotta bring the toilet hey, case on yeah. the plane. By the way, uh, why don't you tell Anthony how happy I was when I found out in Vegas that I was flying to the wrong airport? Uh, <laughs> I got about 14 phone calls from different people to let me know that. You were not very happy, and uh, ooh, it was a rough morning. Somebody threw up a lot, and uh, not me. I didn't throw it was, up. Uh, it was rough. No, but yeah, uh, you know, listen. Well, we had a good time when we were there, right? And uh, besides the beating that you and I took at the table that first day, well, compared to Anthony, it was nothing. Little, little three card, little three card. Lost about two hundred in like fifteen minutes, though. Yeah, not even. It was mm. like ten minutes. Yeah, I saw Opie open his wallet more in 15 minutes than I have in six years, but, you know. <laughs> I wish I could do my crazy laugh, but it hurts too much. Though. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony. I'll stand in. <laughs> All right, Keith. All right, gentlemen. Good morning. Have a good one. All right. I don't get that true hatred in it, though, like Opie does. <laughs> <laughs> he also has to, like, back, like, 10 feet off yeah, of the Yeah, he's got to back up, like, to the wall. And just it belts out, and you could you don't just hear it, you feel it. There's an emotion that it evokes, just hatred. hatred. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right, let's try some of the anti-free ads that came in by the listeners. Okay, right to wrap up this uh, this segment. This is uh, rug burn. Here at Free FM, we believe there should be quality over quantity. We strive to bring you the best shows in radio broadcasting. For example. The Donna Mike Show, The Schnitt Show, Mad Dog, The Grease Man. 
Ah, fuck it. This message brought to you by Satellite Radio. Uh, yeah. Bill, no. comment? <laughs> the voiceover never has, like, any sort of confidence in it, and it's always so quiet, like, make some satellite there's, radio. There's a... Uh, and a dog. And, uh, oh. You just picture it. Okay. <laughs> shakes a little bit. Uh, uh. All right, here we go. We'll try the next one, which is, I'm, I'm telling you right off the bat, because we discovered we got a lot of fine black listeners. Of course. We like them. Uh, Patrice discovered that they have this whole underground thing. They don't want to acknowledge their fans of this program, unfortunately, because of the, the racism that occurs on this program. I meet plenty of people of color that are fans of this program. Well, this is Johnny Griswold. All right. The house next door to me has been sold to Nick. Hear the rest of that song and many others like them only on XN Satellite Radio. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. All right, I had I have to laugh. That's funny. Wow, <laughs> Jesus, you're the rest. Wow, with pride, <laughs> with pride. <laughs> Make sure you crank it up for the neighborhood. Jesus. All right, uh, the next one is from Chris from Houston. Doesn't get the bit. He doesn't get the bit guy. He doesn't get the bit guy. There's supposed to be anti-free radio ads. There's and... always doesn't get the bit guy when we put the word out to the listeners that we want them to contribute to a right. bit. And this guy obviously uh, doesn't get it. He's doing radio should be free. <laughs> radio should be free, just like AIDS. <laughs> All right. I like that one just because it's so bizarre. Yeah, it is bizarre. He ki He's kind of in the ballpark with it, though. Like he's saying that free radio is free, but you know, right? So is AIDS, right? And it deserves to be free, right? And the Kazoo uh, music bed was great. Too. Yeah, it was good. All right, let's go to Snapman. Free FM. Hey, at least it's better than that Kabbalah play. Papa, don't preach. <laughs> oh man, now um, oh, uh, why don't you uh, just um, leave her alone? It's just beginning. You can yeah. feel it. It's just bubbling right now. It's just Simmer. bubbling. Ah, oh, that poor girl. It's just bubbling right now. She's a good kid. The audio's uh, how is she's 22 com. years old. She's your kid, but she ain't a kid. The remixes will start coming in tomorrow, I guarantee that. Oh, them tits. Uh, the woman's tits. How do you say that? <laughs> wow. You see those things? No, actually. Great. Right. Big. Just a little sloppy. She's got some slop to her. She eats good. We have Vamp, Vamp Cry. Is that this name? You're asking Hawk? Yeah. Vamp Cry? Why pay for radio when you can get great programming for free? Oh. Yeah, really. Like Diamond Dave in the morning. Bozy, bozy, bop. Zitty, bop. Hit her in the uterus. Ah. Ew. On second thought, I'd rather have Jimmy's fist in my twat. Free FM. <laughs> You get what you pay for. Paid for by the ONA Army. Oh, that's very good. Actually, right, that's, that's Jeremy funny. and uh, Rachel. Sorry about that. Uh, that's very funny. R wrong track uh, queued up. Jeremy and Rachel did that one. Here's Vamp Cry. Anti-free radio ads. <laughs> free radio. If you want your daughter betting down with Negroes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. That's a celebrity endorsement with Jimmy Norton. That's right. Here's another one using a Jimmy line. Free the way the Jews want you to be. The FM, it just sucks. <laughs> All right. A little anti-Semitism. Never hurt anyone? Okay. Maybe it did. All right. Here's uh, Chris in Houston. Anti-free radio ads. So I open the door and she's sitting there being his and his, his and sucking on his and eating his and XM Radio. Uncensored, you nigger cunt faggot. <laughs> Holy shit. I think that one was actually an advertisement for free radio. Right. Sometimes you can use the bleep. Wow. Sometimes the bleep is good. The guy had a great concept and then just threw it over the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> just said, ah, fuck it. Ah. <laughs> I'm going for broke here. I'm going for broke. I'm all in. 
That was a three for one. You have to believe in your uh, creativity, the creativity there, sir. You're on the right track. Here's inbred. Boozy boozy bop. Life goes on without me. Radio. Some things you have to pay for. <laughs> All right, he just shot the uh, diamond tape. Yeah, and then finally, the last one that came in today: anti-free radio ads. So confusing. This is the description of the track. So confusing. Just had to add to the list to see if anyone gets it. Mm-hmm. By Wit and Drun, or something like that. Wit and Run. Oh, Wit and Run. Right. Okay. Little Declan is 13 years old. Have you seen my son? The child gets thirsty. I can't find my son. Then he runs. Mama, I don't want it. Mama, not again. What the fuck? You can shit off for your family. I'll pay for my nipple juice. Do you routinely use off-color language as part of your business lexicon? And the radio is in the hands of such a lot of fools trying to and that the way that <laughs> All right, well. Wow. That could have been. If those first XM ads were as confusing as that, then that guy actually would have had a fucking then point because I had no Ken idea what that been was right. about. Yes. Yeah. I wonder if the first XM ads sounded like that to people. Maybe Ken was right. Maybe. Yeah. I want you to picture yourself. Picture, if you will, driving in your car. That was kind of good, though, right? Yeah, they're they're getting there. The first batch is always a little. A little I rough. would have to say, bit still on. Bit still on. It's, Guys, it's keep shaky, them short. Though. It's shaky. The wheels are shaking. They're wobbling. We got some <laughs> wobbly wheels on this bit, but I think we're going to continue with it for a little while. Let's pull into the pits. We'll tighten some stuff up and put them back out <laughs> it's on like the track. Like driving an old Chevette over sixty miles an hour. Yeah. It's shaking, it's pulling a little. But then when you got it up to 80, it kind of leveled out. Smooths out. Yeah. <laughs> Some of these bits, uh, the dead in a day, and others, like the Pat O'Brien sex tape thing, went on for well over a month. Here it is, guys. Keep them short. Keep them short. Uh, make it, uh, you know, the, the, the free FM. Think of what sucks about free radio. The commercials. The lack of freedom because of the FCC. <laughs> the re- the redu- uh, uh, not redundancy. The, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know what this sounds it like? It is something that goes over and over and over again. Repetitive. Repetitiveness. Thank you. All right. Yeah. This sounds like when, like, everyone in the class flunked the test. <laughs> so the teacher just says, okay, we got to do this again. We're going to take yeah. the test over. <laughs> I can't get Mark you Mark it all on a F. curve. All right. Why don't we take a break? We have some audio from the porn convention. From our time in Vegas, we have John Montone talking about diabetes. We love this reporter. John Montone, 1010 Wins News. <laughs> and I can't get enough of celeb reality shows on VH1. Celebrity Fit Club is one of my favorite shows on TV. Yeah. And uh, Jeff Conaway, who used to be on Taxi, and he was, what's his name in Greece? He was Kanicki in Greece. Well, he's now a babbling idiot <laughs> on some kind of narcotic Oh, really? He's not willing to admit it yet, but it looks like he's going to finally admit it in uh, future oh, episodes. that was the guy from Taxi? Up. Yeah. We'll get into the audio Oh, wow. Next. You saw him and didn't recognize him? I didn't, I, I didn't recognize, recognize him. him. And that, uh, Kelly LeBrock. Kelly LeBrock, yeah. yeah. 175 pounds she's up to. Stop it. She's one of the contestants on Celebrity Fit Club. You mean the chick from Weird Science? Weird, Weird Science. Science. She's up to 175 pounds. What the fuck happened? Steve, no, Steve, no. She blames it on Seagal. Really? Got the divorce and said, fuck it, I don't want to be beautiful anymore, and I'm going to do what I want, which is eat. Loves meat. When she's standing in the doorway with that half shirt and the underwear on. Unbelievable. And and the little red light is behind her, and she's leaning again. There it is. That's the picture. Well, now show Anthony what she looks like today. Oh, no, I haven't seen it. No, don't ruin it for me, Hawk. This this is what kills you, is she still has that same sexy voice, and now it's coming out of this... I'm going to have to take a stand here. It's a little controversial, I understand. She's oh, right. 175 pounds. She's still hot. Um, You know... She's still hot. Once you get over the initial shock of... Yeah, yeah. I'm not even kidding. I mean... She still has a yeah, nice Yeah, you ass. remember her from nice Weird ass. Science and all that. 
And it's very controversial. I understand that. Still sexy at 175 pounds. Really? I would yeah, but you so. got to admit, when you first saw her, that was kind of like... Yeah, you're whoa. like, wow, that's the same girl. Definitely. I said still sexy. Now, well... now. No, I when she shook her ass for the camera, yeah. Give it me was a, a little bit of a How did I get killed, but... Oh, no. Still sexy, especially no, in the face. Oh, it's... Oh, she's... Bad. <laughs> God, let me see. Damn, let me you see. Bitches, sexy or not sexy, Bill? Be honest. No. If it wasn't, it's because of what she used to be. I would say. Well, I well, would say no. Well, you know? The let, difference let, obviously it, makes it tough. If I was to in high that. school and that was my friend's mom, I'd probably rub one out. There you her. go. I'll put it in perspective. As Kelly LeBrock from Weird Science, she was such a ten it, it, that. You, you, That's you, tough to you, see her any you, other way. You shoot a load just that. looking at her. I understand that. There, she is one in every billion of fat soccer mom type women that are d trying to remarry around uh, everywhere. Right. Trying to find a man at Parents Without Partners. Yeah. There she is. Look at, from here, I see chubby indented knuckles. Oh. God damn her. She's already lost seven, eight pounds, though. She's doing good already. So maybe she'll get back down. And nah, when you, she was. when you get blown out that bad, it just never comes back to shape. Yep. Well, let's, say, uh, let's see what Brian uh, has to add to this. Brian. Brian. Hey, guys. She is so seriously doable still that little Jimmy would eat the peanuts out of her poo oh, just we to go. see where it came from. Thank you for All that right. classic Thank response. you, Brian. Great. We hear from Brian the trucker saying, I'd still fuck her. Yeah. Well, yeah, Brian the trucker. Well, she's not a mess. She's not. Yeah, but she's she's not, also not a truck stuff. Look, whore. She's not messy fat. Right. But I don't guy, know. Is there another picture of her? Some girls could pull off the fat. I'm telling Show you. Show me a secondary angle. Uh, She's uh, trying to find a picture of her. She's such an average fat, overweight woman now. When you go see the, ooh, that that's an ugly picture. Of that her. isn't her. Are you sure that's her? That is not her. That looks Hawk, really bad. That is not her. That doesn't help my cause. Wow. Dude, that is not her. That doesn't help my cause. I am not accepting the fact that that Anthony, is her. Anthony, it's her. No, All right, I got to. Take no, it's not. Anthony, you guys discuss. It's her. What Flatters happened? Hey, can you give me a what the cereal fuck? bowl, milk, and a spoon? That's what her. What happened? I don't know. That one's a that weird That one. doesn't even look like her in the face. It doesn't even look like they pumped their face up. Yeah, it looks like one of her cheeks weighs like four pounds more than the other. Facial cheeks. All right. God damn it. Yeah, I got to take a piss. Uh, Celebrity Fit Club. We'll do the Jeff Conaway audio next. It's it's great oh. stuff. Anthony, that's her. That's frightening. I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> Commercial Stop. cereal. Stop. You sold out. Stop staring at me. I'm eating. You sold out, man. Yeah. I think if you listen to that, that bed of music 12 times in a row, you'd legally be insane. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of... Uh, we'll, we'll put this together. Who is this? New Any contest, clips? by the way. I just talk, I just took the longest pee, I think, in the history of man. Oh, yeah. You were in there a good 20 seconds before I was. The 30 Leslie seconds. Nielsen pee. <laughs> yeah. New contest. Take it, gun pee. Someone's got to set the bar, but when you have to take a really long leak, we record mm -hmm. it. And then let's uh, just see if we could uh, match that from time to time. Call it the Bathroom Olympics. Yeah, Bathroom Olympics. Well, I was thinking that we'll would... We'll eat that up. Honestly, was it at least two minutes? Yeah, it was a very long time. At least two minutes straight. He's no pissing problem. 30 seconds before I even get in there. I get in there. I finish up. He's still pissing. Still coming out. Well, I'm, tr I'm drinking so many fluids just to try to hopefully kick whatever I have. Fluids, goodly. Um, Bill Burr in studio. He's playing the punchline in San Francisco starting tomorrow night, which is crazy. Tuesday through Sunday? Tuesday through Saturday. Saturday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday in, uh, Ma, in San the Francisco. Land, the Punch product, and shoot a DVD for $37,000. Yeah. And plus the price. cost of the tape and the cameras and, um, and the, the you mics. You actually have to pay yourself for being there. <laughs> By the way, uh, very important news. I didn't even know this. Hmm. Stamp is now 39 cents. Oh, I know. Did you know this? When did you find out? Uh, just because there's a line in the paper today or something. It, 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 it was yesterday, on a Sunday, that the, uh, the, 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 the 37 cent stamp, I guess it was, uh, ran out. You're not, you can't use them. You gotta put, get two more cents. So I had all the letters ready to go out. I did, I am a man of the news. 
and I didn't hear about this. Why wouldn't you just throw another 37 cents on and say, oh, well, I'll catch up another day? I'll, I'll tell you why, because it's the, the principle no, of it. In the paper, they're showing lines around the block, people online just to get two-cent stamps because two they got cents. the 37-cent stamps mm -hmm. at home. And I'm thinking, it's pretty fucking cheap to, to mail a letter, so you get screwed one time, fuck it. For then, one letter, And yeah. then when the line dies down in the next couple of days, then you get your dumb two-cent stamps. Why don't right. you get two-cent stamps starting uh, yesterday? You're right, but, but that's for one letter. I usually buy a roll of, like, 200 stamps. Right. Well, yeah, but then you'll get your two cents. All I'm saying is you'll get your two cents stamps eventually. I don't understand these people that had to wait online yesterday for a really long time just to get two cents stamps. Just yeah. to get the two cents like, like they're going to go see U2 or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're getting a lousy two cent stamp. <laughs> I, and if you have a letter you have to mail and, and it's uh, pretty important, then you know what? Take the loss. That's what I was just thinking. Just throw another 37 cents on there and go, all right, you got me. There you go. You made a little extra money today. Why can't I just cut the stamp up into equal portions <laughs> and then stick a little piece on that would have been worth two cents? I paid 37 cents for the stamp. Why not divvy it up and go, here, here's two cents. They you would know, not accept that. I was ready to openly laugh at you, but that is a brilliant Why idea. Why not? I'll even give them half a stamp. Look, you're getting, you're still making money. Make it easy. But they wouldn't take a quarter, it. a quarter of a stamp, because it'll look like just a tiny little stamp. Then I could stamp. use like four. Yeah, if I got four letters to uh, send out, I could use that and not have to waste so many stamps. But why? Ye why yesterday you decided to wait online for the two cent stamps? Yeah. And don't say it's a rich thing, because it's still beyond cheap. Mm-hmm. It is to mail a, a, a letter. You know what though? I found out you can do, and I'm doing this now, online, online. Mailing? Yeah, you get all your uh, software sent to you. You just stick your envelope in your printer. <laughs> Dunsky. Print it on there. It comes out of your account. Never have to go to the post office anymore. Just one more place I don't have to leave my house to go to. That is getting scary. The post office. It's getting scary. I am getting so to the point where I don't have to leave. Although I will have to move soon. But that'll be central command. Yeah, well, then you're going to get a like a movie theater in there or something. Then you won't even go to the movies anymore. I'm looking. Uh, you know, Keith the Cop has a home theater. I don't know how many drug dealers he's shaking down to afford this, but he's uh, he's uh, got a home theater. And he is uh, going to hook me up. Nothing against Keith the Cop. Say hi to your old pal Joey from Paisano's and Mulberry That's Street. another thing I've heard. In the heard. heart of Little Italy. That's another thing I've heard. He and buys those audio magazines, those ones that make your your yep. head explode because you're like, what are they fucking even mm -hmm. talking about? Right. I want a movie theater in my house. Call Joey, I'm telling so you. So then I can get, and then I'll go through XM and make sure I get all the preview copies of the movies because I watch them and then talk about them on the air. So I'll get the first run movie sent to me. Don't have to go to the movie Beautiful. theater anymore. And all the money he's going to save on gas, he's going to use to build a big wall around it. Build it? No, he's going to It's done, my friend. It's I'm done. putting turrets in. There's going to be uh, <laughs> anti-aircraft on the roof. <laughs> and a moat. He's, he's going to hire, like, uh, out-of-work guards from the Berlin Wall. Those guys could use some, uh, some uh, extra money. Unbelievable. Poor bastards. I'm just my goal. Just to type out some things on a keyboard and have it sent to me. Why leave? What's <laughs> out there? What is really out there to see? We've traveled. We've gone. To, and an occasional cruise or a trip down to the Bahamas, I'll take that because it's wonderful, beautiful, and warm. But why go to the supermarket? Why go to the movies? Why? You're not going to go to the Bahamas. After a while, you're just going to rent, like, Blue Crush. Or whatever the fuck that movie was called. Throw a little sand down on the floor. Yeah, and then you just sit in there. <laughs> no, awful, I will go on awful vacation. Robin Williams shirt that he'd wear <laughs> on stage. I will go out on vacations. I will go to Disney. I will go to you the know Bahamas. What? I'll do that. I'm saying you won't. And I I'll, will. The same way you could predict <coughs> the future of satellite radio. No. I'm going to say you're not going to. You're going to start because phoning in this show. Bill, I can say why I would go to those places because it's fun. You're vacationing. Why go to the movies? They are annoying shitholes full of annoying people. <laughs> okay. Would you invite those people over your house to watch a DVD of the same movie? No. They're annoying. Totally. But you're telling me those resorts aren't annoying? Yeah, but uh, there's alcohol. And you can walk away from the people. You could walk to another area of the beach and go into the water. It's not like you can walk 
out of the theater and still see it. You have to be contained in that room, that ick, with those people. Ick. The supermarket, same thing. You're wheeling that cart around. If, if, if I get behind someone that isn't moving, or that woman that stops her fuck, like she's setting up a roadblock on purpose. That cart is turned sideways in the aisle. She's looking, standing in the middle of the aisle, looking at what she's looking at, and she sees me coming. Get the fuck out of the all way. This, all you... this audio is going to be used at his trial someday when oh, yeah. he goes up in the tower <laughs> and just starts shooting at people. Don't you get lonely not leaving your house? What oh, lonely, closer, lonely closer for who? Phobic? Lonely He's for who? Sliding into human this contact. contact. Lonely like, for human contact. Human contact, fresh air, new surroundings, something. I don't, fresh air? I got a yard. If I'm in my apartment too long, I go nuts. Fresh air? I have There's to get a yard. out there and yeah, walk around. You mix in with the people, you get some calm. Yeah, I mix in with the people when I walk from here to the garage. I'm I'm seeing enough of people, and it's enough to remind me I don't want any part of them. You even took the I walk out of your everyday uh, routine. Just one way. He doesn't even walk now. I walk back. You walk up the stairs or the other. Well, not I even choose. Stairs. I walk back. I I walk in the summer, and I walk back to my car uh, at in the afternoon. Wow, that's got to be at least uh, three quarters of a block. That's all the people I want to see. <laughs> that is all the people I want. It's enough That's to remind me I am disgusted with humanity. You don't even have enough time to go, hello, neighbor. Neighbor? <laughs> no, it'll start with an N, but it ain't neighbor. <laughs> Jesus. The racism. Right. What is wrong? It's Who New Yorker, are? my friend, with the filthy uh, there, racist mind. There is mind. such an accidental shooting in his future. No. Nah. No. Nah. Accidental stabbing? Yeah. Should have seen me going on. Uh, when what, we what do you call when you trip? run somebody through with a sword? Is there a name for that in, uh, in the corpse? It's just called uh, running them through, impaling, 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 an accidental impaling in your future. You should see me going on vacation. Well, going to Vegas, the ritual around the house, the packing, what everybody else does. But I have to go around to all my various weapons and unload them uh, while I'm not in the house because I wouldn't want anybody uh, breaking in and, and uh, having loaded weapons there or. Um, if uh, a relative is coming by and staying, I don't want loaded guns like that. So as packing is going on, you're just hearing from different rooms, <laughs> shells flying all over the house. I'm telling you, he's the next Jason Williams. <laughs> it's hysterical. It's certainly the fuck are you looking at? He's going to blow away his limo driver. Let me tell you something, my friend. I am one of the safest people with a firearm. I was raised around them, and I am Mr. Safety. You might think I'm kooky. I am safe, safe, safe. Absolutely. All right. Well, we got the Celebrity Fit Club audio of Jeff Conaway. He is the star of this uh, this uh, Celebrity Fit Club. That also features Kelly LeBrock. Kelly uh, LeFat. Uh, the yeah. chick from the Cosby <laughs> Show. God damn it. Give me the lineup of Celebrity Fit Club, please. Oh, uh, Chastity Bono. That's right. Chastity Bono, who is always fat. Cher's kid. Very big. Fat uh, dyke. Very big. That's what they say. Also, uh, I thought she was hot there for a minute. Young MC, yeah. And they used to bring her on stage when she was eight, maybe. No, no, it wasn't. The Sunny and Cher variety hour, when, they, when she'd wave bye-bye. Maybe it was because she was standing next to Cher, who was hot, and you just knew eventually she was going to be hot. Okay, you caught me in a moment. I looked at an eight-year-old. She was a very, very... She was an adorable little kid. A very cute kid, yes. And then she had some problems, and I don't know, she just ate a lot. But uh, then you got the middle daughter from the Cosby Show... You have, um, I'm trying to remember everybody. Tempest Bledsoe. That's her name. Uh, Tempest, Tempest Bledsoe. Tempest Bledsoe. Young MC. Very good. Who's now over 300 pounds. He's trying to lose Get out of here. Young MC is over 300 pounds? You know, when he was looking... Uh, Wasn't he skinny? Yeah, well, when he was looking like that, with the abs and everything, he said that, that he was starving himself. That wasn't really? his body type, but the record industry made him... Uh, wasn't know. his body type. What's his body type? What's his name from... Um, the record industry? What, the one year he was on top? <laughs> yeah. I think it sounds like he's got a 20-year 1989, career. 1989, that was it. Well, that's what he's saying. He was fat before that. He was successful for a couple of years, and he was thin, and then he went right back to being over 300 pounds. Yeah. And then the dude from D12, Eminem's uh, side project band there. Uh, Bizarre, right? He's there. Uh, he just has, he has a huge stomach, and he has this big tattoo right on it. Yeah. Well, because it's all about his belly. He's made a lot of money off his huge belly. Uh, Bruce Valanche. The comedy writer who's also done Hollywood Squares. Oh, you got to see that guy. That guy is like so embarrassed with himself. He has to just keep doing jokes yeah, just really? about how he doesn't want to work out. It's oh, really, so he watched the show. Yeah, it's really awkward. I saw it yesterday. I love this show. 
Uh, what's her name from the Parkers? That? Countess Vaughn or whatever her name is. Mm. And then, of course, Jeff Conaway, who's just the star of this year's Celebrity Fit Club. Where's the Jeff Conaway photo? You got that one? That's, That's the guy from Taxi. I That's the guy from Taxi. Wow. He's trying to say that uh, he showed up at one of the fitness things they had to do. Completely and the Gary Busey look to him. Completely fucked up. And he's claiming he took two Benadryls. And they got a doctor that's part of the panel. Like, oh, Benadryl doesn't do those this. Those Benadryls oh, so are like heroin as far as dude, uh, people are concerned. He's slurring. He's slurring his speech. Really? Yeah, and he's supposed to be doing this uh, thing where they're like rowing in one of those uh, Hawaiian Hawaiian things, whatever they're called. With the pontoon. Kayak. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sort of kayak. Like kayak with that extra part. It's a, the Hawaiian thing. Yeah. And he's like passed out. Just An outrigger. Sleeping t- oh, on no. his side as they're trying to do this uh, thing. So here's the audio of Jeff Conway from Celebrity Fit Club. Listen to this. Why are you so angry, Jeff? What do you want me to do? How about just do what you're told? I've done this for 45 years, longer than you've been a colonel. Okay, well then you should be mature enough to get in here and sit your fat ass in a chair and let's get this show on the road. When I was your age, I'd have you down like that, brother. Hey, bring it on. Why went through more than you've done in your entire life? You ran into the military because you couldn't do anything else. I supported a f- family from the time I was 10 years old. Uh-huh. I went through pedophile at that 7 years old. At 3 years old, I slit my f- wrist. So, mm-hmm. keep your f- mouth shut. Hey, that's pretty impressive. No one's trying to undermine you. That's really impressive. We still got a show to do. And you're not being a team player right now. Nobody told me I was doing a f- drama. Hey, all you, you know, do is come you here and sit down. I did a show called f***ing Taxi, one of the biggest shows ever. I did a show wow. called Grease, one of the biggest movies ever. They were funny. How about lose the f***ing way, sit down, be quiet, so we get the damn show going. That's what we need to I do. Got two movies coming up. That's what I'm doing. What are you f***ing doing? Right now, you're wasting our f***ing time. That's f***ing going right now. Now, can we start this? See, that was the tape wow. rolling before they even started the show. But he now is they, angry. Now they're just, they use wow. it in the actual show itself. They were coming in to start the show, and uh, and that, he was just came in all angry. More Jeff Conway. All right, Red Team, you ready? Ready? I'm ready. I'm ready to okay. rock and roll. So we're going to run this way? Well, you're going to run that way. We're going to run this way. Okay. Where's the water? That's where the Are you sure you want to go with his ass? He looked over at Kelly like was she was sleepy but well, it is the Benadryl. Uh, Benadryl is gone now. I'm fine. You all had the confidence in him? How do you feel? Well, not. Well, he seems more awake. I'm ready. Come on. Let's go do this thing. There you go. He Adam. is wasted. Gone. You could hear it slurring. Gone. I guess later on in the uh, season, he's in a hospital like something really bad happened. Oh, boy. <clears throat> what happened there? Huh? Did he say pedophile when he was seven? Yeah, went and through then he, a pedophile at seven. But then he tried to slit his wrist at three. At three? Yeah. Is that just an accident? Uh, it has Isn't to that be. a kid that yeah, had an accident running with a glass? Yeah. Man, I tried slit my wrist at three. No, it's, it's a kid having an accident. You it's ran like, with some scissors. <laughs> your Fisher Price uh, <laughs> knife set. <laughs> 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 Uh, here's, uh, this is great. Listen to this. Jeff Conway from Celebrity Fit Club. Jeff, in my job, I see people that are going through what you do that are able to turn it around. I think that we've been here for you, too. I, I didn't feel that you were there for me yesterday. Eh? But we, we I was there. We could have not had you in the boat. But I, but I was there. They didn't you in the boat, and, and we put you but, in the boat. Uh, look, you were here for me. But you you wanted to throw me out of the boat. No, she didn't. I said everybody else wanted to throw you out of the out boat. Of the, the show did. Your I, team stuck well, up. then they should have. Why the f*** did you? You know, can I just say? I think that's fair. You know, I'm sick and tired of this Go take your show and shove it up your ass. Is this great TV? Oh, wow. yeah. I, we, we said it, Donnie, uh, Donnie, D- Danny Bonaducci started this latest trend where you got to get the celebrities on TV all fucked up. This guy Because this is the mess. simplest TV show you could do. You go on, you do a few jumping <laughs> jacks, you eat a salad, and they go, hey, congratulations, you lost five pounds this week. You know what's making it into this big, huge drama? <laughs> but what would be really funny is like the agents pitching their client, 
Okay, he's only like 15 pounds overweight, but man, this guy is a fucking alcoholic. Yeah. Like I have never seen. Yeah, that's exactly what did Raging doing. alcoholic. Because he's not even that much overweight, really. He's like maybe, I don't know. They don't care. They'd rather get some guy that's a little yeah. chunky uh, and a psychopath. I want to go on there. I'm 165 pounds and attempt to lose 40. <laughs> and they just give me encouragement every week. I'm doing the best I can. Thank you. <laughs> this week, you lost seven pounds. Oh, great. I'll do better next week. <laughs> Get a thin guy in there to turn. Out There's a side. couple like that. That uh, Not Tempest Bledsoe. The, the other black girl on there. She only weighs 130 pounds. Yeah. It's like... 130. She's yeah. like 4'10". Oh, she's uh, short? Yeah. So, and, uh, yeah. I, oh, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, no, but she's, look. Oh, her? You wouldn't call her fat. No, I wouldn't. She shouldn't be in and there's, uh, the club. Yeah, that's not bad. And then there's uh, Valanche in the background, Bruce Valanche, who's just oh. atrocious. Oh. We know what's funny is he waited this long to finally have a drug addiction. I mean, his last hit was Taxi, right? Oh, Jeff Conaway? Oh, I'm sorry, wrong guy. They've been talking about Jeff Conaway for years in Hollywood, that he's just impossible to work with, and he's just a complete asshole. And now he's showing the he's showing the rest of the America. He's bringing that. up he's bringing up credits from like fifty. I was on ride, <laughs> <laughs> one of the biggest cowboy shows ever. I got two movies coming out. Really? Oh, they this look up, uh, IMDb. He's see known what they as are. the only guy from Taxi that really didn't have a career after the show. Yeah, mm -hmm. he hit with Grease, granted, but the rest of the guys were just massive after Taxi. Mm -hmm. I was a producer on Big Valley. <laughs> <laughs> I broke Lee Majors. <laughs> so we'll be paying attention to Celebrity Fit Club. This Jeff Conway is the reason to watch, without a doubt. All right. Man. Isn't that great? Problematic. There's more audio. Maybe we could get it. If, if Let me ask Danny. Danny. What's his, uh, what are his uh, new movies coming out? What are they called? Uh, Sin Jin Smith and uh, Living the Dream. And what does he play in uh, one of those? Click on that movie and see what Doorman he does. Doorman number 2. Yeah, let's see what his part is. All right. Let's see. Uh oh, he's down. He's dick. What credit is he? 1 2 3 4 5 6 7th uh, down. Right before Rest of Cast. Rest of Cast, cast. <laughs> alphabetically. <laughs> he's <laughs> Rest of Cast. Here, go back. I want to see the last hit he had. Let's see. It wouldn't be wrestling. It wouldn't be the corner office. It wouldn't be Pan Dulce. It won't be Curse of the 49er. Not the biz. Not why am I. Not do you want to know a secret. Dating service. Jawbreaker. Jim Cotter. Who's in Jawbreaker? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, 1999. No, no, different one. Marcy's father. And then he did some Babylon 5 stuff. Oh, well, Babylon 5. So there you go. 98 about. I think it was on and on. Hey, he's working. All right. Dang. Hey, that's a is nice that positive spin from Bill. <laughs> that was the best of it. I mean, there is some stuff where he's kind of there's more slurring and more him just being, you know, inaudible. But it's really not. It's nothing really for the radio. Oh, it's fun to hear slurring though. Yeah. yeah. It's not much though. Yeah, I'll, I'll see what I can to say. Yeah, it's, it's the Benadryl. Yeah. That, that's the best part. Where he's like, it's the Benadryl. I took a couple <laughs> Benadryls. <laughs> yeah, always blaming it on the Benadryl. Benadryl should be flying off the shelves if it gets you this fucked up. Really should. Because anybody that has a problem, oh, it's the Benadryl. Right. Hey, uh, Bill sent it, uh, brought in something today. Osama bin Laden's uh, daughter? No, niece. Oh, yeah, this is great. We were talking about this during the commercial break. In GQ magazine, mm. the one that has uh, Jack Black on the cover, they have uh, Osama bin Laden's niece in there doing like this sexy photo pic picture and on the on the outside of the magazine they write jihad jihadi they did not write yes. that meet the sexy bin laden and in jihadi. the inside what was so remember after 9-11 when they were talking about comedy just in general they were just right after 9-11 they were just like will anything ever be funny again yeah how will we put the pieces together and literally a little over four years later you can jerk off to bin laden's niece it's With a joke magazine. on the cover, Jihadi. Uh -huh. This is uh, yes. looking hot, playing a guitar. Daily News just hitting their foreheads. Why didn't we, Why didn't we think of Jihadi? There's her in a bathtub with bubbles looking hot. Yeah. She's oh, got yeah. the family resemblance. And she's she's yeah, got she's the trying to big, get a, wide, very long yeah. nose. If you were going to fuck a Bin Laden, yeah, this would be the she one. She would have to be the one. She would definitely be the one. Now, where does she live? 
Uh, New York City. She's yeah. all westernized. She isn't like uh, she's in New York, man. Middle Eastern type uh, fanatic. She's in New York City. <laughs> her first name. Her first name is Wafa. W A F H A. Wafa. Wafa. Wafa, and she's going by Do Four. Can't believe she didn't keep the Bin Laden last name. Oh, now she didn't. Yeah, no, she didn't. And she's trying to get this music career going. And uh, evidently, she's having a tough time when she went by with the Bin Laden last name, which you can't believe when she would introduce herself as Wafa. 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 Bin Laden. And she says, uh, it's really tough that I have to always explain myself. It's like every time I meet someone, I have to move this huge mountain that's in front of me. And sometimes I get tired. <laughs> yeah. It's really weird. It's almost like one of my relatives orchestrated two jumbo jets <laughs> flying into the World Trade Center and caused the deaths of over 3,000 people. And it's like that's the first thing they think of. They don't think of my music career. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm standing there with an acoustic guitar. It's like, hello, I have a song to play. Why wouldn't that be your first thought after I say I'm Wafa Bin Laden? Hi, I'm Susan Hitler, and I have a ukulele. Would you like me to sing Tiptoe tip Through the Tulips for you? Did your uh, great-grandfather uh, orchestrate the deaths of uh, six million Jews and over uh, you 10 know, million... You know, I am so tired of that being the first thing people think of when I say I'm Susan Hitler, and you see the... The harmonica and a ukulele. I see the ukulele. instruments. I see the ukulele and stuff. But what what's it like knowing you're related to the the, the one of the most evil you know, Jack, men? Can can you remove this person, please? Because okay, it's like enough already. Okay, it was only six million. It wasn't seven million. It wasn't ten million Jews. It was six. Okay. Jesus Christ. And and it's about the music. Really. It's about the music. Okay. <laughs> It's sort of a hip hopish <laughs> yeah, right. blues. That is a tough nut, man. That's one of those things that on on a small level anyone can relate to because you have the asshole relative. Everybody. I that, I got I got a relative yeah. who went to jail and went, uh, went to jail. Yeah. Yeah. He's changed his name. He went to jail. My parents will not tell me what he went to jail for. So uh -oh. I'm assuming oh, yeah, sex it's got to be sexual. Yeah, sex crime. But everybody has somebody in their family they can relate to that that is an asshole, an embarrassment, uh, yes. someone you don't want to um, have the same name as maybe. Or uh, but then there are other levels of it too. There <laughs> yes. are yes. like um, a Billy Carter, Jimmy Carter is there, the president of the United yeah. States, got that asshole brother around. Yeah. Billy Beer, even like Roger Clinton was was an embarrassment. Right. Was Sing an embarrassment singing to Mama Kin on, yeah. on Letterman. Right. Very embarrassing. Then those are just embarrassments. Then you have the other ones like, I'm sure Jeffrey Dahmer's got relatives. Oh, absolutely. He killed a few people. You know, now that to some people might be fun at a bar. Hey, it's fucking Jeffrey Dahmer's cousin over there. I you think we'd have a, a drink minute. with if, him. If you came walking in and you were just like, you know, uh, what's your name? Oh, my name's uh, uh, Michael Dahmer. Yeah. yeah. Dahmer doesn't like have the ring. Right. It's of not a, of just. Evil. Hitler. Yes. Bam. No Hitler. You gotta you, mumble that. You don't, What's your name? Yeah. Uh, Jason Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Job application? Well, uh, how, let's how take you a look that? at your, your resume, Mr. Hitler. <laughs> you know, because you see that guy, and it, all, all he's thinking is a payroll check, company name, and Hitler on it. You're Every not getting the Every time he goes job. somewhere and they do roll call... Join you're like at camp. You know, Sullivan, Michaels, Hitler, and people just what the fuck is so, it? Is a goddamn Hitler here? And and you 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 never use your name with the uh, in the restaurant for the reservation. Oh, ever. Hitler, table for four. <laughs> Hitler, table for four. I've been, I've been to a lot of restaurants. Never ever heard the maitre d' call for Hitler. Or Bin Laden. Or Bin Laden, yeah. You definitely won't hear smoking or non-smoking. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hitler, smoking. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. No. Well, this that, article... name, that name has been retired, done, yep. the, as is the Bin Laden name. One of the few names that have been officially retired. Yeah. You know, find them. I heard a lot of the Hitler relatives, they changed their name. Really? They changed their names after the war. Goebbels. Uh, all right. So I asked Valvo if he was hesitant to take her on as a client. Who's Valvo? Like uh, some some agent or something? Yeah, mm. it's some sort of like PR guy who clearly wants to bang her. Right. Like who, who's who's that? Uh, 
What the fuck? Celine Dion, you know, she married like that, uh, that, yeah, that Renee. Eight, that, yeah, that the older year old gentleman. Guy. But he was just interested in my musical career. That's what this guy's going to do. He, he wants to bang a Bin Laden. Well, he says, no, but I have gotten static for it. Yes, he says, recalling a woman who asked him, what the fuck are you working for these people for and taking their money? What is wrong with you? You know what? In that sick, twisted way, you would want to just kind of kind of flip her over, jam it right in her ass, pull her hair and go, your fucking uncle did this. Your <laughs> fucking uncle fucking killed three times. And and just have her have to take the pain for it, because it's the closest the you're going to get. Hey, we got a Stalin on the line. Joe in Virginia Beach. Joe. What's going Joe, on? His name is Joe, and your last name is Stalin? Yeah. You're Joseph Stalin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, technically, yeah. Come on, no way. How does that work out for you? Yeah, well, it doesn't go well with the, uh, with the employer. If you put that on the, uh, an application, that, that, that throws up a red flag. <laughs> Joseph Do they just Stalin. think you're being like a wise ass writing that name down? What's like that? Michael, Michael Hunt, you're writing down Joseph Stalin. Do you write Joe or Joseph? Joe. Joe yeah, definitely. Yeah. Go over too well. Joey. Joey Stalin. <laughs> Joey Stalin. Yeah, Stalin. right. Yeah, and that one, even I mean, that one, uh, Stalin was really, really bad. Bad I'm, person. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to think yeah, he how... Killed, he, he killed quite a few, uh, the, quite a few million the Russians. The thing is, it was his own people, and it was very secretive. You know, the the the... It wasn't really as public at the yeah, time his, as his whole Hitler. murder. His flopped. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it really did. He had a lot of uh, insecurities internally and took care of them by killing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but it wasn't like an outwardly. It seemed like, hey, he's running the show, whatever, however yeah. he wants to deal with It's like with that his Ron people. Howard movie there, the boxing one. You would think you'd have Russell Crowe in Oscars. Right and just right. nobody no saw it. No one saw it. No one cared. That's how his was the, uh, that's how his atrocity went. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> didn't beat Hitler's. Well, here, all right. Thank you, Joe Stalin. Thanks Joseph God, Stalin. Let's go to Andy in Wisconsin. Andy, what's up? Hey man, you talk about having a tough one. It's Andy Heitler. H I T T L E R. Family actually had to add a T. Oh, you guys went with the Heitler. Heitler. I'm telling you. If you're going to change it, why don't you change, change it to the something thing. completely different? Dude, I, Joseph Stalloon. There's no pride in that name where you want to keep a little of it. Dude, Heitler. I, I changed my last name to Joseph's because I didn't want any fucking part of that. I Joseph's. Porch. That's amazing. Hitler's got to be a rough one to go around with. And let's go to... Uh, ain't going to work for you. Let's go to Chris in New Jersey. Chris, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, man. I, I know um, there's a Jewish girl that's a friend of mine. She's going about the black guy whose name is Adolf. What parents would name their kid Adolf? Uh, it's the most uncomfortable thing because we're all used to saying nigga that. It's just it's the oh, most Jesus. weird, uncomfortable, oh out of place thing. All right. Let's go to See, Tyler in Wyoming. I, I thought the uncomfortable was, was Adolf and that <laughs> no. she was Jewish. No. He, no, the most uncomfortable thing is this guy wants to drop the N-bomb. That just killed it. Hey, right by the there. way, what is what is a knitter? A knitter? Yeah. Uh, Somebody wrote that on my site. I assumed it was racist. Cause oh, it, was it old, absolutely was an is. Fan. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what you usually go with. It absolutely is. Yeah. It's not, some people send messages with, um, like, ridiculous th in your comment section. And I have to approve all comments before they go on. And they're like, dude, this is really funny. And it's like some picture of a guy back in the 1800s, early 1900s, lynched from a tree, a black guy. And... Like, he wants me to hit accept and click it so it's proudly displayed yeah, on my... Comment on my page. Dude, man, check out my... <laughs> I sent an email to a kid no. the other day. I just said, could you please stop leaving unfunny racist shit on my site? <laughs> it isn't funny. It's Dude, not. Dude, you just don't... Fucking, I thought that Bill Burr was cool. Guy's a fucking asshole. Yeah, he's a fucking pussy. That doesn't fucking get it. <laughs> he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. Lynchings are hilarious. Oh, Tyler in Wyoming. What's up, Tyler? Yo, boys, what's going on? Hey. Hey, uh, I worked with a guy over at Weatherford. It's a crude oil uh, hmm. well uh, station. Uh, this motherfucker's name was really Jeffrey Dahmer. No kidding. No shit, man. He, he was a twisted fuck, too. Yo, that's going to be hilarious if you, you have some sort of name, right? Your whole life it's cool, and then all of a sudden somebody with the exact same name goes out and does something completely fucked up. up for you. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. There was a time being whole... named Jeffrey Dahmer, was that? There was just just another some name. guy down the street. You're right. You're right. A whole page of uh, Hitler's. And there is a Susan Hitler, by the way. There is know? a Susan Hitler. Get out of here. Avon Hitler, A-V-E-N Hitler. Karen Hitler, that sounds like a nice girl. George Hitler, a couple of them, Karen. There's only 12. Martha Hitler. So the name is almost retired. Almost. There's only 12. It's like practically, they're like protected by the government. They're Missouri, like Wisconsin, Arkansas, Indiana. All over. A lot of Wisconsin. Wisconsin, Wisconsin. All right, let's try to guess which city the person is actually a racist and is proud of the name. I'm going to go with Arkansas. Timbo, Arkansas? Yeah, Timbo, Arkansas. That Richard. guy loves being yeah. Hitler. And they, they're his whole town, like, <laughs> he is the man. He gets free drinks at the bar. I'll go with another one that a lot of people know. Powell, Ohio. Ohio. Ohio sure. has a very strong, strong clan. White supremacy. George Hitler. My name's George Hitler, and God damn it, I'm proud. Turney. What else is in this article? They looked through her iPod, Osama Bin Laden's niece, and, oh. and she has 5,000 songs, and uh, they scroll through ACDC, Almond Brothers, Beach Boys, Butthole Surfers, Coldplay, The Cure, Lou Reed, and Mozart. This is a funny one. They're talking about the stiletto sh heels that she wore for the photos, and she calls them her horseshoes, and then goes, that that's so anti-Muslim. <laughs> is she a Muslim? Yeah, but you know something? I, I really got to, on one point, It's as you read this whole article, there's this whole vibe where she wants to trash Osama, but she's worried that she'll get her head chopped off. It's like being uh, someone uh, born into the mafia that wants no part of it. Yeah. You try to go about your life, but you're sure shit ain't going to badmouth anybody in it. Right. Yeah. That's where she is. She wants to And then you gradually get sucked into it and grab a gun behind a toilet and blow you people's gotta. heads out. Yeah. You gotta. But a bing. She doesn't understand, though. Um, she's talking about this interview with GQ Magazine, and it's different than the other interview she's done. And she's quoted as saying, uh, oh, well, the, the guy's quoted as saying, it's so good to see you smile so much. You used to sit there so sad when we were with a report like you were about to be executed. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you expect? <laughs> That's what I love about what we do. You get a celebrity uh, that comes in here, and you you have the obvious question, and the publicist will try to get to you and go, uh, "Could you not ask him about that?" Don't yeah, ask. We've been asked that so many it's times. Like, then why is he even here? Where they bring yeah. people in. Don't ask. It's like interviewing her and making believe that has nothing to do with her. Who came in with a uh, a a starlet? Some band. Guy was a singer. Uh, yeah, we fucked up that day. That well, was, that was uh, early in our. That was. Uh, Third Eye Blind. Third Eye Blind. Lead singer was going out with... Charlize Theron. Charlize, yeah. And she was right there Before in our green room. Famous. And it was like... Before uh, she really hit. They she wanted was... to be about him and everything. So don't don't mention she's out there. Don't mention that there. <sighs> kind of a bummer we never did. Yeah. We lived. We learned. She wants to embrace the Western culture, I guess, and be, you know... No, she grew up out here. She, spent, she grew I think, up I here. Think she spent some time in like Saudi Arabia and said it was horrific. Wow! Like, Surprise. Yeah. Do we have any of her music? I don't know. We got to get it. Is though. it on Dillette? Do we play it on the fucking terrorist <laughs> relatives channel here at XM? <laughs> she also isn't there a terrorist relative channel? Ready for this? She also hates milk. Wait, not a California roll though. Okay. <gasps> she hates milk and dishonesty. She won't say whether she hates George Bush. As for Dick Cheney, yeah. she never listens to what he has to say, but thinks he's the Secretary of State. <laughs> Brad Pitt is a sexy hunk. While George Clooney, are you uh, going off article now and just your own uh, spin on things? Please. <laughs> While George Clooney is a sexy hunk, even more, and the best-looking guy alive, she daydreams, isn't germ obsessed, teaches a little French on the side. Oh, no. Friends tell her she's a talking machine. Owns a pair of open-toe shoes with very high red stiletto heels. Uh, calls them her horseshoes, like. Bill said. She's a struggling art artist. Honestly, do I look like a spoiled brat, she asks. I tell her no. She has a good attitude. I can't be otherwise, she says. I would be like crazy if I had to take everything personally all the time. I want to be accepted here, but I feel that everybody's judging me and rejecting me. <laughs> yeah. She um, laments. Well. Persona non grata in both the East and the West. Come on, where... Where is the American spirit? Accept me. I want to be embraced because my values are like yours, and I'm here. I'm not hiding. And then she talks about her mom. My mom is always telling me that if I say something too drastic, I might get killed by a fundamentalist, she says. My mom is freaking out every day that some crazy fundamentalist is going to say, how dare she say that? And lop her head off. Yeah. Who's Is her mom Osama's 
sister, or is I don't know her mom know married to she, Osama's brother? But she met a, Car, her mother, Carmen, met Osama one afternoon, and uh, I guess Osama I, caught her backyard cookout. No, he Osama caught her without her veil on, uh, and he just made some disgusted noise and shooed her away. <laughs> Soon afterwards, he went to Afghanistan to fight the Soviets. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, they ask her, Shoot her away. They ask her what it's like for her when Osama releases another video. I don't even watch it, she says. Mm. Uh, she hasn't had many relationships. Wafa means loyalty in Arabic, but she can't imagine being faithful to someone for, say, 10 years. I think that even uh, women can't be faithful. I, I read in a study, and I think it's true that after three years, you're not in love anymore. It's more about friendship. See, that's what made me like it. That's a real honest statement. <laughs> you like that one? Yeah. Maybe you could hook up. I'd bang the shit out of him. Yeah. All right, I guess that's about it. That's pretty crazy. Well, make good her, luck to her. Make her wear the veil. <laughs> <laughs> good luck to her. I'd like to hear her music. See if it's any of that, like, stuff, or if it's real, uh, you know. Now she's really into, like, Madonna. Is that it? Do we have any of her performance? <clears throat> yeah, we'll find some. We don't have it I today. Thought, but. I thought we did. <laughs> She's got to uh, have a demo on up there. She's the daughter of Osama's half brother. That's, oh. that's the uh, relations there. So, uh. we have some of her stage show. More crazy names, by the way. I don't know. What? We'll, we'll, we'll try to find it. I don't have it in front of me. You don't? I could have sworn you had some of her uh, stage show on there, but. Oh yes, I do, Anthony. I didn't see it here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> pulling fucking teeth. Dude, I told you, I'm under the weather today. <laughs> well, yes, Anthony, I ah. happen to have a sample of her music. Well, let's Would you hear, like to she's hear it right upholding now? Upholding those Muslim... Uh, 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 go ahead. <laughs> it was under the Celebrity Fit Club CD. Oh, see, that's I did why not you didn't see it, it at first. Oh, there you go. But let's now we're all on the same page. Let's hear a little of Here's uh, Osama bin Laden's niece singing and performing on a stage. Sexual, spiritual, <laughs> spiritual, sexual, both and in all, sexual, oh. spiritual, all like hell, the name of God, my breasts. My white shining legs, my vagina, my ass are all godly. Rest in Hebrew, Shad. God in Hebrew, Shad. Boy, he wouldn't like this. Shad in Hebrew also means my breasts. God in my tits. My tits inside God. This my is all the stuff they're going to chop off. My tits are God. Pop. Wow. I'm so happy I'm in the Kabbalah Center. I learned so much. I now meditate on letters T-I-T -T, and everybody will immediately notice my tits. Letters T-I-T. -T, come hither. All right. Well, that's great stuff. Yeah, yeah. there it is. From, sort of uh, scat. Scat Osama singing. Bin Laden's uh, The niece. rest of that audio is on opianthony.com. Make your remixes and start sending them in, boys. Someone else that has an outrageous name they, uh, of, a, of a co-worker they work with. Yes, uh, Paul in New York. Yeah, hey, guys. Uh, I work with a guy named Gregory Hughes. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Does he call himself Opie? <laughs> Actually, we call him Opie now. He just didn't realize why. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank <laughs> no you. No problem. All right. Why don't we uh, take a break? News teases when we get back with Bill Burr. Yes. We like doing the news teases when you're here, Bill. We've been saving these for a while. They're panicking oh, right. us a little more? Yeah, my favorite one is uh, he's black. <laughs> oh. Wait to hear what the news said about that one. Saw some good teases uh, in Vegas when yeah. we were on there. The news in Vegas. You, you go to another city and think it's only in uh, New York City or the city that you're in. It's all over. They were scaring everyone. And even their promo for the news, without mentioning a story, scared you. We're here to uh, inform you, keep you protected, and help your children. Like, there's danger out there, and the only place to go to get uh, a safe information is from these people. Yeah. Well, why don't we, go, uh, why don't we get right into it, then? Screw it. Oh! We're looking for people to send in their scary news teases from, a, from around the country. Scary. Here's some of the better ones that we've uh, collected in the last month or two, okay? The first one. 
A new disturbing blackmail scheme targeting our teens. It's like walking down a dark alley in the middle of the night. Our webcams exposing our kids to a new cyber danger. The I-Team investigates. Tuesday at 5, only on ABC 7 News. Yeah, well, I got to agree with him there. <laughs> Some of the shit I see. Uh, it's happening today as oh we do our radio show. Oh, my goodness. Pal Talk. Pal we're, Talk, the rooms are up to what? A thousand people now? We're we on Pal that? Talk. We can fit a thousand people in the rooms now. Uh, we get more every day. There's hundreds in there watching. Um, how does it? Is ex- that what that is right there? Yeah, they yeah. have. See, they could see you right there, uh, up uh, from that camera, and then uh, the office cam is on. If Danny's listening to the show, he can give a little wave. And uh, could there, flash there he is, like that girl. There it is. And then, oh, yep, there's Lil on Cam. Lil on Cam is a real trooper. She is a real goer. Uh, shows them tits, and she's very cute. And uh, the, these rooms fill up with uh, girls that just love showing themselves naked. It's wonderful. So how do the how is webcams exposing your kids to danger? I would think they are online on their webcam and being taunted to show their uh their dirty parts. <laughs> and before they can look away, there's some awful middle aged man. Oh, Who's Jack beating cause, himself. Because here's what you get. With this. As, 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 we have very unique uh, rooms here, the Opie and Anthony rooms. There's the Opie and Anthony live camera, which is the one that uh, we're they're looking in on now. And it's guys hanging out, chatting. They got cameras, girls showing some tit and shit like that. It's nice. And them watching us do the show. <laughs> it's very nice. nice. Very nice. Civilized. <laughs> but you go to some of these other rooms, it is porn. On some of them, because they're just streaming porno movies. Women showing their tits and their vaginas and shoving shit in them. But for the most part, 90%. The camera zoomed in on a man's nude lap as he is pounding away on his dick. Just jerking off. <laughs> his cameras uh, after camera. Just peep guys jerking well, off. Now that I know that, that that music bed wasn't scary enough under the news right. teaser there. No. Not scary enough. You know when they invented webcams, you think that's what they uh, envisioned for this whole I think they technology? envisioned um, what did they, video conferencing. You think that's what they really envisioned at the time? You're in New York. Your business partner is in Tokyo. You need a face-to-face meeting. Thank God for the webcam. That's what they were hoping for. Right. You're the, uh, we need more uh, Toyota bumpers. We need to send a Toyota bumper right away. <laughs> you know, that's what they said. <laughs> and it immediately turned into... If I get a naked chick on the other side of this, as opposed to a Jap at a car plant, I could put the camera on my dick and jerk off while she watches. This is great. And the second that happened, va-boom. When they, Everyone's got them. When they invent new technology, they always meant well, but it never it goes out that right. way. you got to get your, the porn out of the way with your new technology, and then you finally start discovering all the things you can do with it. Oh, yeah. Do you, you know, know the monks, monks in robes? With that first friggin' wood handled printing press. Right. You know the first thing they did was just some dirty monk word. Yeah. And spread the ink down and <laughs> squeezed it and pulled out the piece of papyrus and went, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck. I always wondered who, who do you think the first person ever did to jerk off while watching TV was? Because right out of the gate they came out with like Howdy Doody. They must have been some pervert. You think it was. Immediate I mean, or it show, took a I while. Mean, at some point, like the first time you saw a beautiful woman, she's on television, all right, and all of a sudden you realize you're alone in your living room. You're like, hey. It's Uncle Milty in the Texaco Star Theater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, fucking Uncle Milty. <laughs> Uncle Milty. <laughs> Hello, ladies and germs. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to jerk, jerk it off. Ed- <laughs> Well, look, you know when you were a little I think kid. Away for I, no, no, HBO. no, no, I don't think so. Because oh, we remember, 13. remember when you were a little kid when you first saw like the Sears catalog? Yep. Anything could make you dick hard. You didn't give a yes, fuck. So right. I think the same way with TV. Even if you were jerking off the yeah. magazines and you'd see some stag films, whatever the fuck stag they called them at that film. point. Well, twenty three skadoo. The first time, uh, what a Doris Day, one of those people came on the tube to hype their next movie. The problem was never on there long enough. You, you, the visual was never on there long enough to do anything. Like, uh, they used to go to like um, Tahiti on mm-hmm. Channel 13, National Geographic special of Tahiti. 
and they would show these hot Tahitian women, topless, just mm-hmm. walking around the island, and boing, insta boner, but not enough time. And how much time alone did you get? Hey, you know, leave, leave everybody. I want to sit here in the living room where there's only one TV and jerk off. <laughs> oh, that's right. Not like there's a TV in every fucking room and a VCR and everything else. There's the family TV in a sarcophagus fucking case, big wooden thing with a record player on top. I'm telling you, somebody did it. Someone, somebody did it. Somebody with I want to know body. the first case of jerking off to the television. And what they jerked off to. Yeah. Wow. Let's go back to the news teasers. Let's say hi to Schwiggy real fast. Schwiggy! Hey, fellas, what's going on? Hey, man. Hi, honest sir. Good, honest to goodness news headline I saw over the weekend on Channel 11 News. Never saw something this low. Parents driving over their kids in their driveway with their SUVs. Could have happened to you. Channel 11 tonight. Yeah, they've been talking about that one. I, I, uh, I people can't see behind the SUV, so they seem to be backing over their that's children in alarming anyway, numbers. All right, thanks, Schwab. You didn't punch out. You talked over me. That's right. And Well, we'll, we'll do one of the news tees here. And when World News Tonight continues back from New York, a deadly new trend. Why are more and more children allergic to peanuts? Can you protect them even when a kiss can be deadly? <laughs> more and more? What are they saying? If you eat some peanuts and then you kiss your kid, you can It happened. Them? Happened to you a must chick, have been, man. You must have been on the road. It happened here in New York, I think. Some uh, young couple, I guess they were in their teens. I guess it was the chick. She knew she was allergic to peanuts, so she avoids the peanuts. But uh, her boyfriend, I guess, had something with peanuts in it and then gave her a kiss, and that was all it took to They're get the kissing. allergy going. Little she had a little peanut. Snickers bar, yeah. skipping a meal. Really <laughs> satisfies. <laughs> and she's dead. Dead. Why Why are more kids becoming allergic to peanuts? Is it something they... Yeah, have? that's... I don't uh, know. See, see, that would be like, well, my kid's not allergic to them, so I don't have anything to worry about. More kids are becoming allergic. Uh-oh, now nah, i got to worry. When we do these news teasers, <laughs> they all end with cliffhangers because we, we don't know the answer to any of them. We should really have the answers to these two. That's not a bad idea. Like, why are the webcams? We discussed the speculation, but is it? Is it... Maybe it could be like yeah, the webcam's on and... Your kid walks past it. That would make and for, they're naked. That would make this bit better. You're right, it. Yeah. Because then we guess and figure out what it's all about, and then we see if we're right. We talked about that. I could, I could, I could remotely access my home's webcam right now. I could peek in right now and look in my living wow. room. People are gonna get busted for cheating. I now. choose not to do that. Because when we were in Vegas, my girlfriend's mom was staying over. I chose not to peek in. Oh, you didn't peek? I did not peek. I thought you'd go for the peek. No, I didn't peek. You should have set the webcam up in the bathroom just for a laugh. <laughs> for a laugh? Just for a laugh. When you start to peek, does, like, does the camera, is it red? Does the light, do they have any idea that you're watching? Um, that red light that you see on that camera? I see that it. That will come on. That will come on. But... It's so in with all my other computer stuff. The big giveaway is, but this can be covered up too. You're breathing on my, the audio speaker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <sighs> the desktop on my home computer will come alive as if a ghost is using it. The mouse, the, the, the little icon will start moving around. Like I could access my com- home computer from this computer. So you know, all I think the sudden, more I do this show, the scarier you become as a human being. Just, just not. And, and. For some reason, and I don't know why, I take that as a compliment <laughs> coming from you. What are you coming working on? Just what are, what are you working I on? I don't have a goal that I'm going for, but I'm on my way you're, you're, somewhere. You're preparing. I'm, I don't, He's preparing. He's stocking up weapons. weapons I'm not talk. really preparing for anything, I'm waiting though. for the day when he goes, I can't do the show anymore live. That'll never happen. Uh, we're going to build a studio in my place, and we'll just communicate through the day. That's what say. He's going to phone in the there's, show. There's other radio guys I, that do that. They so do that. This far fetched. No, I enjoy He's coming gonna here be one of those and guys. doing this show. On a daily basis. Have, like, Look a in his eyes. In Did you office? believe that? I'm not preparing really anything. I think he's sick yeah. of it. No, I really do enjoy coming here and doing this program. Could you say it without shifting your eyes all around the room? Where no, I, can actually I, can't. <laughs> I, I look around all shifty. <laughs> Let's go to Larry, the uh, trucker. Larry? Yeah, I'm gonna say, I was going to say, oh, when I was about nine years old, maybe ten, I don't recall exactly when it was. It was late 80s, 87, 88. I was, um, you know, just learning how to masturbate, and I had a real fascination with a chick on Alf, you know, the curly 80s there. I used to smack it off, you know, to her, and my mother caught me. Honestly, it was absolutely horrid. Nowadays, I'll drive down the road, I'll pull up beside a Mercedes, and I'll be whacking my stack. 
and um, I'll be like looking down, thinking, you know, if they just only knew that you're jerking off to women on the road. There's how many tons do those vehicles weigh? Barreling down at 80 miles an hour, and the guy is jerking off. Fantastic. They're obviously not giving him enough time just to make the delivery. No, no. He I can't know. pull off in a Super 8 and just rub one out. Something. I fucking love you guys, though. All right. Thank you, Larry. You know, I, I did that once, and when the moment of <laughs> truth comes... <laughs> You lose like control of your freaking legs. Yeah, you can't. You break that was, gas. That was the first and last time I ever did that. I'm yeah, like, this is never. way too fucking dangerous because your right leg it just starts. It your goes dead and then twitching. it has too much energy. It's all over the place. I had a hooker. Uh, I had a hooker jerk me off while I was driving one time. Really? Yeah, I was in uh, Boston and I remember uh, there was a comedy connection. There was Nick's comedy stuff sure. and I was just starting out. So what I do, I would do you know my ten minutes at the comedy connection and then I would drive over to Nick's comedy stuff. And that's what I was planning on doing, right? So I did my set, comedy connection. And I'm driving over to Nick's and I pull up to a red light and there she is. This girl, she just looked hot. I didn't have any money. I'm like, ah, I'm just gonna say, ah, I just rolled down the window. I go, listen, I don't have, I don't have that much money. I just want to say you look really good. And she's like, well, how much you got? And I'm like, ah, I only got like twelve bucks. Nah. And she's just like, open the door. <laughs> <laughs> open the door. So, so she gets in. <laughs> and she starts jerking me off, right? And I'm driving. I'm going by Chinatown in Boston. So she tells me to turn down this alley. And I'm literally driving like three miles an hour, creeping down this alley. And I'm like, uh, I go, you got any lotion? She's like, I got some $8 lotion. I'm like, I don't know, forget it, right? And the thing is, like, we went right behind, like, this Chinese restaurant, and there was, like, ten Chinese guys on their break. And I'm driving down the alley, like, two miles an hour, and she's leaned over like this. <laughs> and as right as I'm going by, they're all like, oh, da, 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 pointing at me, laughing. <laughs> Busted my nut, dropped her off, never made it to Nick's, and I went home, and I watched the Rangers win the Stanley Cup. Hey, there this you go. Now we all night. know what night that was so and where we were. I see Mark Messier holding that up. I, I, I think you know you that soiled your pants. Brings you right back. Yes, I did. Uh, what did you do with the stuff? Was it all over you driving uh, yeah, home? Yeah, it was a crime scene. <laughs> <laughs> back to the news teasers. <laughs> I think I had to sell the car. <laughs> Jesus. Back to the news teasers. Let's listen to this one. Life-saving material that's often tossed in the trash can help to save local children. <laughs> <laughs> All right, at life saving, thrown in the trash. Yeah, see, we need the answers. Children, You're that so could be right, anything man. from restaurants throwing away food. Danny, for now on, we need the answers to these. All right. Oh, what happened? I don't know. A kid with spina bifida. Wait, what part of his body is that? That's, that's back. the back. Are you kidding me? It's like where part of your spine. Visuals and children with spina bifida in the United States. We hope that she can live a long and productive um, and Iraqi. full life. I, I yeah, know there's concern once of... she gets ah! back to Iraq about oh, the kind of medical care yeah. she would get there and the kind of that follow-up. That's great. Oh, it's the worst get. line. It's like a there. rare burger on her back. <laughs> yes, it does. It's um, the worst line, but I'm going to say All right. No you one is going to hit that doggy style. <laughs> Later on. Jeez. I'm gonna hold on to it like a steering wheel. Oh. All right, so this is like, I don't know, trash can help save local kids, and we don't know what. And we don't know what, what they're throwing away. You're right. You know, there's something missing with this bit, and I think you finally figured it out, Anthony. We need to know the answer, we so we can speculate the and then get the answer. Okay. Uh, well, let's go with this one. And out of control, new warnings about a popular form of birth control. This is Nine News Tonight. Hmm. Well, birth control always uh, with the warnings. But is it, can it give you the cancer? Or can you have kids while you're on it? They won't tell you. you got to tune in. And we don't know. Motherfuckers. So we can't even help you. No. Now Sorry. I know why this bit sucks. Now I'm with the listeners. We love this bit, though. <laughs> I uh, Yeah, we, we've we always loved this bit. It creates talk and scares, conversation. It scares and, you a little. But uh, now we need the answers. we got to take yeah. the bit to the next level for the next time. What do you get when you breed a pug and a beagle? It's oh. a, a puggle. And you get a breed that dog lovers can't seem to get their hands on fast enough. But aren't these new designer much really a good idea? <laughs> um, ah, no! She made it sound like this thing is going to come in as you sleep and just tear your throat out. <laughs> yeah, right. And then the music hitting right after that. Some sort of retarded dog. You think the retard yes. dog? 
I'm going to go with the retard dog. I'm going to go with... Isn't that just you know? a cool dog to have? Retard dog? Like what? Fucking dog. Sounds like a cartoon. Yes. Retard dog. But yeah, they're called cops. Like, we had a dog that was stupid in California, and you could tell it was just a stupid dog, but as long as they're lovable, yeah. who cares? What I'm fucking doing? He doesn't have to do a math test or anything. We don't have the answers. And well. no, yeah, as far as the puggle goes. I say don't get him wet. I say the only danger. <laughs> oh, or feed him after midnight. <laughs> or feed him after midnight. Thank the you, only man. danger a puggle can pose is if you're driving and you see one on the side of the road. They are so adorable <laughs> that you would crash your car because you cannot stop looking at. It. You, you've never seen a cuter, more. Ad- I defy you to find yeah. a more adorable I think they're creepy animal. And I want to borrow one of your weapons. Stay uh, and put them out of your misery. Never. And do your impression of the puggle in his eyes. They look at you and they got big eyes, big uh, eyelashes, and they go, blink, blink, (laughs) blink, 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 blink. And they're real sad. And they always have the reflection with the window frame in it. The little four squares, (laughs) rectangles of of, of pure white light. Yeah. Blink, blink, blink. They are just so cute. All right, here's the ultimate... Uh, I'll be murdered. Here's the ultimate news tease. Take him Tonight on CBS yes. 11 News at 10, the water you drink, could it cause cancer? That's what people in some local towns are claiming. CBS 11 News investigates tonight at 10. Why don't you tell us the local towns? Some local towns, so yeah. it's not even one. It's the local towns where they dumped all the toxic waste. Yeah. Why don't you just tell us the local town? Could there be toxic waste in your town? The water you're drinking could give you cancer. Oof. If you get it, could your balls fall off? It's not an island medical center. (laughs) Cancers of the throat, neck. (laughs) All right, we got one more for today. Scary. I don't like having him at night roaming the streets when I'm out out there in the dark and he's, he's black and I'm scared. And there is a strange creature running around this neighborhood right there for you. Tonight, we know exactly what it is. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, that was wow. back to back? Yeah. Wow. No, it's the same story. No way. Yes, that's the that's the thing. They're trying to make oh, it Oh, I like... thought it was a black guy that the woman was afraid of, that's, and their next story was a creature. That's why they're fuckers. Oh, now I gotta hear it again. Yeah, he kind of jumped in to try to, or she did to like smooth it over. Right. They made it sound like it's some scary black guy out there. Right? Scary black guy. It's actually something else that happens to be black. Some okay. Kind of animal, maybe a bear. A bear? Damn. Danny knows the answer to this one. This one I remember the answer to. All right, All right let, let me we hear it again. Guess. We gotta guess. I don't like having him at night roaming the streets when I'm out out there in the dark, and he's he's black, and I'm scared. And there is a strange creature running around this neighborhood right there for you. Tonight, we know exactly what it is. Wow. It's black. It's roaming around. She doesn't it's like it. It's not a bear. It's not a bear. It's not a bear. What town was this in? Oh, that I can't remember. remember the state? State? Section of country? No, I just remember Planet what it Danny? was. You know what? I heard a, a, a twinge of cuteness. Yeah. In the, I'm going to say it's a skunk. Oh, okay, I'm gonna go the other direction. Good, black, but the white stripe. I'm gonna go with Rocky Raccoon. Ah, rac- a raccoon, but black, but it's at night, so it might look black. I'm gonna go with an elk. <laughs> <laughs> all of you are wrong. What? You're all wrong. All right, is it a, is it an animal? It is an animal. All right, it's an animal. All right, let's try Okay, it. all right. Is it a mammal? Yes. It is a mammal. Is it indeed black? Uh, This one, yes. This one, but they could come in different colors. Uh, yes, their colorings it, do vary. Is it a domestic pet? No. Uh, I got it. Wild animal. A bat. Nope. Uh, it's an otter. <laughs> a a a beaver? <laughs> I mean, what the fuck is left? No. Nope. I'm trying to think. If, uh, if you knew what area this was. Does it fly? No, it does not. It, it does swim. not fly. It's a mammal. Can it swim, too? Does it live in a tree? No, it doesn't live in a tree. It walks the ground. It walks the ground. Is it a mole? No, it's not a mole. Squirrel. Nope. A- is, is it? Is it? Frog. It's a fucking black frog. Nope. Is it as big as a bear? No, nowhere even close. Oh, it's a uh, rat. It, is it a rat? No, bigger than a rat. Bigger than a rat, smaller than a bear. Cat. 
No. Nope. Dog. dog. Nope. Rich boss. <laughs> Rich boss. <laughs> okay, we're zeroing in on this now. <laughs> yeah, Bigger obviously. than a rat, smaller than a bear. It's black. It's a mammal. It's not domesticated. Uh, it could be another color. Can, I'm out. I'm not a raccoon. Can it, can you uh, raise it as a pet? Some people have known oh. to. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Carnivorous or vegetarian? Uh, I believe the. I believe it's Carnivorous it means you eat meat. Yeah. And vegetarian. I bet you it's a panda. <laughs> oh no, it can't be a panda. <laughs> and and it's in <laughs> out west or east. I honestly I can't remember what state the story was from. But you know what kind of animal? Would you find it out west or out east? Or well, where is it all over the United States? Yeah, they're you all over the place. place. They're all over the it's place. A buffalo. No. A cow. Nope. Fuck. This is gonna be so a pig. Good. It's a pig. It's a pig. A pig. A pig. <laughs> he gets it. A big pot-bellied pig. No, this was like a, it wasn't one of those small ones. It was like a yeah. nice size. It probably escaped from a zoo or something like that. But it was a uh, pig on the loose. Wow. Good Why one, does Bill. Why to throw in it's black? That's just so it's big. It's black. <laughs> it's black, and, it's and I'm scared. Scared. <laughs> scared of its blackness. It was wow. A big white pig with glasses. She'd be just. Oh, isn't that cute? Yeah. Well, look. All right. The next time we do this bit, we got to get the answer. Charlotte. we Will do. Thank you, Danny. Danny just handed over some more celebrity uh, Fit Club audio. Yes. Of Jeff Conaway. More slurring. More slurring from Celebrity Fit Club. Let's People's listen to this. guesses stink. Snake. A gorilla. A narwhal. <laughs> narwhal. You <laughs> said an elf. Jim Norton. <laughs> The elk can't hide. No. It made it sound like it's hiding. It's in the, the bushes trees. and behind the trees. Yeah. Here we go. Chat. Yeah. You all right? If you don't want me to be Jeff Conaway, then go find somebody else. I've walked off shows before, and I will walk off shows again. Nobody wants you to walk off the show. So let's calm down, and let's get back on track, okay? By the way, Ants sounds so... Tough and looks so tough during Celebrity Fit Club. Oh, stop it! He's the worst. He really is the How worst. How does that guy have any television career? He's got a huge hit on his hands, though. Why? I don't know. Because he was on Last Comic Standing. Yeah. Which? All right, here's Jeff Conway. That's it. Search the country for some of the top acts out there. <laughs> so I heard, but it didn't include a lot of the. Better acts out Pop there. Act because they were working. Because they yeah. Anybody with a career said, "No, nah, I don't want to do this." Do you want to live in a house with ten other comedians? No. You know what? I don't think I do. No. All right, here we go. More slurring from Jeff Conaway. All right, Jeff. Yes, sir. Let me ask you a question. At yesterday's fit camp, you looked like you were in no condition to be doing anything yesterday. Yeah, I took two Benadryl. I'd never done that before. It totally, totally whacked me out. I had no idea what was going on. Just yesterday, Jeff showed up at Fit Camp clearly under the influence. Uh, he looked confused, slurred his words, what? and had everyone concerned. He can't even walk. <laughs> wow, that is gone. Walk. It's the simplest TV show, like we said earlier. Eat that ain't no salads and then do a little exercise, see how much weight you lose. That was not a Benadryl. Of course not. Dr. Ian stepped in to see if it was wise to allow Jeff to compete in fit camp. On your heels. I, I am on my heels. I have flat feet. Since this morning when you came here to now, you seem very groggy. You can't really walk a straight line. Did you, well, did I, you take something? or I took a Benadryl. You took one Benadryl? I took two Benadryls. Two Benadryls. You know, I know Benadryl, and there's no antihistamine that works that fast and has that kind of effect. We're concerned about you, man. I'm concerned no, about I'm you. No, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, believe me. Believe me, I'm fine. Definitely not I, feeling no I pain. Was definitely, yeah. something was wrong with me. I, it was it confused me as much as it did anybody else. Yeah. You know, I, I don't do things like that anymore. And, and, I, and I never did it at work to begin with. So, you know, um, I'm sorry. I took two Benadryl, you know. I, I, I learned my lesson. Yeah. That I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine was was every drunk guy when you ask him for the keys. That I like was, that. no, I'm fine, I'm fine. I like he goes, 
I took I took a Benadryl. You took one. I took two. I took, you two. took two. Seven. I, well, you're not believing one. Whatever, whatever number gets me through this. Yeah. <laughs> whatever number you believe that I could have taken to get to this state of intoxication. Uh, the whole box and the box. I just shoved it in there. <laughs> Sorry, I've never done that before. Uh, I, I I did it. I apologize. We have one more clip. Jeff Conaway on Celebrity Fit Club. He finally admits to prescription drug use here. Exactly. What's happening medically with you? I mean, what kind of medications are you taking? And, you know, you keep saying Benadryl, Benadryl. Benadryl. Yeah, I take uh, some Benadryl. I take a muscle uh, and I take a muscle relaxer. But listen, two tablets of Benadryl do not produce the effect that we saw in Fit Camp. You know, I, I don't do drugs. I don't, I don't, you know, 20, 15 out of the last 20 years, I've been sober, you know, clean and sober. To be very honest with you, in order for this to work, we're going to need you to buy into what we're doing here. Right. And I have to be honest with you, the last couple of weeks, I mean, you have not been here. Or if this is your being here, then that's a problem. Where have I been? What are you talking about? Even tonight, you're slurring a little bit, <laughs> and that's a concern for well, us. You know, I, I've got medical issues, you know. I've got torn meniscus. I've got... I've got uh, degenerated discs, I've got herniated discs, I got in my neck, I got a prosthetic shoulder. Everything that I'm talking about is above the chin, up mm -hmm. in here. I'm, you got brain I'm damage? Not a drug addict, I'm not an alcoholic, I don't do those things anymore. So, there I, I get this guy though. Oh, you do? Yeah, dude, you're on Taxi, you're in Greece, you're fucking huge, and now you're on some look how fucking out of shape show I am. I would be completely inebriated, too. I wouldn't want to remember a second of it. You know, you brought me right in with you. Yeah. Is that young MC? Oh, my God. You know the tail he probably got during the Greece years? Ugh. And the Taxi years and stuff? And now, yeah. He just can't live with himself anymore. He can't anymore. get a job. He's He's got this... Uh, this fat show. It's not even a reality show where you're the cool guy. You gotta on it. end the show standing on the scale, like looking yeah. over at Bismarck. He. <laughs> There's not enough Benadryl. Yeah. <laughs> and well, VH... Everyone should be slurring uh, on that show. Well, VH1, keep pumping them out, man. They're great. I uh, love seeing these celebrities. And I gotta in watch now and see that Kelly LeBrock is a, a slob. Pretty big. Oh my god. Well, check out Flavor Flav. Uh, Trying to find a woman. That show is hilarious. Yeah, I gotta see that one. Absolutely. Have you checked show. that out? Oh, great show. It is so. Did you see the hot tub stuff? Last I, night? I didn't see that. I just saw them all screaming at each other. And at the end of the day, they're, they're fighting over flavor. They're, they're fighting over Some flavor. Crackhead. Flav. It is really good. These bitches. It's really good. Let's go to the phones and say hi to Charles in Delaware. Charles? Hey, fellas. Today I learned that I would bang a fat Kelly LeBrock in a Ben Laden. There you, there you go. Let's go to Rob on Long Island. Rob. Hey, guys. What's going on? Hey, Rob. Yeah, I got two things. First, I just wanted to thank you guys for putting a bit on Foundry that me and my friend made. It's been getting a lot of downloads. What bit? Um, the little kid oh. uh, reenacting the Jimmy bit. Oh, we got to get to that. I have it in front of me. We got this when we were in Vegas. We still haven't played it for everyone. I hear this bit is really, really Very funny. Very funny. Yeah, it's uh, me and little Connor, the, the guy in the diaper from the Christmas party, uh, yeah. the Halloween party. Yeah, we Someone's got to remind us to play this tomorrow morning. Can we get the original bit, too, so people understand what it's all yep. about? Iraq, you remember? All right. Well, I'll tell you what I learned. I learned that Grandpa Hoo Hoo is about eight months behind on his material than you guys. Yeah, yeah so. he uh, got awful reviews on his first show today, by the way. It's all over the Internet. Yikes. I'll be studying uh, the transcripts later, definitely. Got to know your the transcripts. Oh, you got to know your enemy. Okay, but, guys. Talk to you later. But it was a disaster of a first show. Let's say hi to Dave in Tennessee. Dave, what's up? Hey, good morning, guys. Hey. I learned everything better with wheels. Absolutely. Bill Burr, that's it for you, unfortunately? Yeah. Punch I'll, I'll be in all next oh. week, though. Punchline, Punch San Francisco, Tuesday through Saturday. Hey, man.